Okay, um, getting ready to start here. Hold on, I got to post to the group pages. Pages, make sure I'm not, there we go. Okay, just a second. I think what we're gonna do today is, uh, I'm just gonna go through the newest posts, see who's come to these groups and do some hoof evaluations. And then uh, if Riza shows up, we'll see what he's up to. So let's see here. So I, I have to go copy and put this on the pages. So just a second here. Okay, maybe I'll just put it on my regular page there, too. <clears throat> oh. Okay, well, let's see. Got eight people here so far. Let's see who's here. Let me see. Um, Anne, Kathy, Denise, Eva. Uh, hello. Hi. Meg, Rachel, and Susan. Hey, I hope you guys are all doing well wherever you're at in the world this day. Um, if this is all we had to do, it'd be okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to go to a group page. Um, I'll get there and then I'll do a a new share. Let's see, I got to move some stuff around. Get too many windows going here. Let's go to the mentor page first. Let's see, new share. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay. And here we are on the, on the mentor page. So we're just going to go through them. And there we are live right now. Um, but it hasn't changed yet. So I don't know what, what the deal is there. Anyway, they got to go to YouTube. Let me see if uh, YouTube is... Uh, I guess YouTube is broadcasting this. I don't know. I'm lost. So many windows so many windows um let's see now i'm on the mentor page okay so let's just kind of go through here quick look at some of the posts okay so rachel greet asked the question she said so i was trimming a thoroughbred that is one of my corrective cases and i have noticed as with some other horses as the heels and bars start to move the foot gets a convex bend in the middle, if that makes sense. The frog and soul clear, the, the frog joins the soul cleanly, clear, or probably meant clearly, clearly higher than at any other part in the middle of the foot. Any thoughts or reasons behind this? Well, it was that way before. Um, but because you probably had uh what happens is as the heels are trimmed out and you just let's let's okay i made that bigger did that come out right or do i have to change the share again can somebody tell me bigger okay okay so uh the foot was bent anyway um but until you start defining it you don't realize it it, it's like out here in the ditch in front of my house. The grass grows by the side of the road and in the yard. And then there's the ditch. We don't mow the ditch. Uh, and so 
even though the grass is cut on both sides of the ditch, um, a lot of times the grass in the ditch is the same height. See, because you ain't been trimming it. And so what happens in these feet as they all get bent like this, um, but if they have retained soul in here, lots of dead soul and the frog is kind of big and dead looking, you won't notice it. But they, they pretty much all will have this concavity, um, which is a false concavity because it's produced because the foot is bent. Um, just a minute. Let me save the image and uh, turn or flip it around. Um, -dum. Oops, I lost it a second here. It helps to turn things around. Okay. See how concave that is because the heels are pulled forward. Um, but what you'll find again, if if this all kind of retains soul, you you can think that's you know the bottom of your soul when in reality. Every time you trimmed, you didn't, you know, we weren't taught to trim the soul. And some of these horses retain soul because as the capsule gets smaller, it squeezes all the soul tubules together. And so they stick in the soul more. And so we don't, it's still there in all these horses. We just don't see it. Okay. Let me go back. I've, I've figured that out on my pony when she got a canned foot and her foot just perfectly bent and just folded. You know, it was really deep in the collateral grooves and, and in the center of the foot because the foot just bent. But slowly as she was trimmed, that sole just filled in to look like normal sole. So let's see. Okay, but she's doing a good job here trimming her frog and uh, needs to trim up these bars a, a, a little more. You know, see these bars are just little wispy things because in the back of the foot where the foot is bent, the bar corium is bent. See, so they're growing, instead of growing normal out like this, they're growing kind of forward and they're partially covered up in here. So you ain't got much strong bar there. So what you're hoping is that as you weight this part of the foot right here, right into here, all this, it's going to add horn into the capsule. And slowly these heels will move back and the frog will fill in and move back. And um, that that bend will come out of the foot. See, that's a false concavity. And uh, you, just, you just know how, when people look at something and they don't understand it, and then they draw a conclusion that is in error, and then they go around telling everybody about it, we're all just a bunch of tape recorders. We just repeat what people say. and when you don't know a subject to begin with, and then someone introduces it to you, they can make uh, what is basically a falsehood and a lie, even though they, they're not like purposely lying, purposely creating a falsehood, although people can do the same thing on purpose on any subject. They're not purposely, at least in this case, as far as I know, um, and unless it's later, once once they've got the whole herd following them and they can't back up, <laughs> you know, um, uh, they can't. Uh, I don't even remember what I was saying. I'm not feeling too good today, by the way. OK, once they make a determination, they draw a false conclusion and then they use their logic, 
that they used to come to this conclusion when they didn't know the truth to begin with, and they don't even know they're leaving out a lot of facts, okay, when they, you don't know the subject, so they take what they have logicized in their head and reasoned out, and they present it to you, and you go, yeah, okay, that makes sense, because you didn't know the subject to begin with. And so they can make um, what is falsehood seem true to you, and then you go and share it in the same way, you present it in the same way, with the same e evidence, and a bunch of evidence is left out, you know, or some of the things you're saying are just totally wrong, but you present it to someone who doesn't know the subject, somebody who trusts you, you know, and especially if somebody is an expert in a field. Okay, and then they come and they present this stuff, doesn't matter if it's hooves, any kind of science, uh, any situation, um, the medical field, it does not matter. Once they present their reasoning to you when you didn't know the subject, chances are you're not going to question it. And then you're just going to repeat it like a tape recorder. And, and it's going to take a while for you to break out of that box. You know, in my case, uh, I knew from having been raised around wild horses in Wyoming that the concept was true about uh, a trim based on the wild horse model. And I was fully persuaded and convinced of that. Okay, but um, uh, the, per the people that uh, came up with the idea and then developed the trim didn't base it on the internal anatomy of the foot because they didn't even know the horse had a foot. They just thought it was a capsule with parts in it. They based it solely on the exterior looks of the thing, okay? And so now we know that these feet can become deformed, that you can they can wear their heels out or you can trim their heels out and it pulls the whole back of the foot down and forward and it can bend the foot and uh, create this false concavity that like we're seeing here. And uh, so now we know that that, that can happen. Um, 15 years, let's see, when I start in 2005, trimmed for two years and my horses went lame um, from doing uh, trimming from the top and then uh, did some other trims, but it all went to the same place. So um, what does that do? If you are convinced, if you've had experience that you've seen wild horses and ranch horses raised with wild horses that were never shod, running over the wildest terrain you ever seen, okay? So you know that's true. You know that's true. Yet, when you apply what somebody has taught you to supposedly get that, and it doesn't come to pass after a number of years, well, something's wrong. So, you know, somebody's wrong. Either those horses that were running around there in Wyoming are wrong, or the person who came up with the tram is wrong. What's going on? Why isn't it happening? See, so, so anyway, um, when you don't know the truth to begin with, somebody can easily convince you that a falsehood is the truth and they don't necessarily do it on purpose. Like they don't necessarily create a falsehood on purpose, but that is how tradition gets passed from one generation to the next. Because let me tell you right now that men do not like to question themselves. Um, I, I don't know. Men don't like to question themselves. Um, and I don't, I'm not that sure that women do either. So, you know, all inclusive noun. Men and women, human beings uh, don't like to be wrong. But the advantage that I think, um, okay, maybe I'm being sexist here. <laughs> the advantage that women have is they want to fix things. You know, um, 
not to say that men don't, but they're like caregivers and they notice every little hair that's out of place on that horse and they start questioning why. You know, and they're a lot of times they're going to get to the bottom of the matter no matter what, you know. Um, so there's, there's, you know, that's why women, you know, as mothers and stuff like that, man, your husband, your kids can never lie to you. <laughs> You're going to find it out even if you don't want to. You know, it's like you have, a, we have a sixth sense, you know, it's the BS detector, you know, the lie detector, the there's a contradiction here. I don't understand it. I want to know more. The curiosity, you know. So anyway, um, that's how people get convinced that these feet got to be concave. But if you look at another type of wild, because of one wild horse model, okay, but if you look at other wild horse models, they don't have that same kind of concavity in the foot. Um, their soles are thick and they have a big sole ridge and um, then the bowl of the sole right here fills up and the frog gets real thick and things like that. Okay. So eventually this foot will straighten out, the bars will get longer and stronger as the heels come in and move back, the frog will get thicker and the ho hoof will not be bent in the little tiny capsule anymore, it will start to flatten out like it's supposed to and then the soul will grow correctly so okay all right well let's look at another one here okay so this is uh 21 hours old and this is fawn witten which i'm going to message her and tell her um that we're doing this group um i am doing your horse in uh, hoof chat. I don't even know if she knows we have a hoof chat. So uh, maybe I'll uh, try and send her a link from Zoom. Just a second here. Hmm. Well. second air oh, boop, boop. copy invitation okay just a second i'll be back i'm gonna send this gal an invite I'm a little under the weather today. So I've been gluten intolerant for years now and every once in a while, I think I can cheat. I'm telling you what, I know. Sorry for oh, you got the same thing? No, I was just sorry to hear it. It's just, oh, I, yeah, thanks. Doesn't, doesn't feel good, eh? No, it's, it's miserable. Okay, so I sent that gal a, a letter. Okay, so let me reshare. Okay. Okay. So she says, I was taking the heels back before I found tack over a month ago. Feedback, please. This foot is her worst. I think the lowest bulbs. I soak her in her stall all night. Should I let her out to pasture when the skin is soft? Um, I'm, uh, good question. Uh, maybe let it dry up a little, you know? Um, the thing is, uh, this foot here is boy, it, I did the same thing. Like, I don't know, what did you guys do? Like I first I took the heels back to the widest part of the frog. And then I started measuring them at one and one eighth inch. And then for a while, I would just always take them to right above the periopal flaps. So who else, who else? Uh, uh, what kind of heel situations did you guys do? I got I was, it. Oh, go I ahead. Was, sorry. Well, no, I was just fortunate enough that I uh, 
found you. Oh, <laughs> so okay. I ne- so I never really, I did, you know, that uh, widest part of the frog, mm-hmm. uh, but I never, there was other trimmers involved, but it wasn't until I saw your work that I did it all the time. So okay. I think so, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. So did you find me after 2016? When did you? Uh, that would be, yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, the mechanical okay. laminitis one, oh. I think you had to put out something about we're trimming our horses into mechanical laminitis. Okay. And that's where I found that. So. Okay. My story's a little different. I was um, following a lady who said to leave the heels alone completely. She's, mm-hmm. I forget her name. Um, Lana. I don't know. She died. She. Oh, she no. To, okay. She <laughs> followed was, Pete Ramey. Yeah. yeah she she guided the method. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I forget yeah. her name. I forget yeah. it too. And okay. th- I don't know. You know, I just, my, my mayor who's now deceased um, of natural causes just had these canned feet and Mm -hmm. So I just left the, you know, I'd left the heels alone and I I don't know, just, I went away from her. And then I found um, someone who was also doing other things with horses. And they said that, you know, where the heel wants to be when you look at the tubules at the back and you see the, um, there's a kink in them and that they, if I re- think I remember that was something that Deb Bennett said also, but I do mm-hmm. not want to commit to that because that may just be a crazy, you know, yeah, that's funny in my brain. And, and, th- and then something that just didn't seem right. And I don't know, I really did believe it. And I, and then I started looking around and, uh, Providence brought me to you, but it took me, I, I did a lot, a lot of looking and your situation just seemed to make common sense. Okay. So there, that's, that's how I got there, but it is really scary about how many people are out there who, who don't know. And we just yeah. follow and it's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's interesting because what you said there, I think I've heard that before about, uh, you know, see, when they say stuff like this, well, you know where the foot wants to be when blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, uh, you can't tell anything like that. (laughs) You know, you got to know what the true internal foot is, you know, and then, then you by your understanding, you know where that foot wants to be. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to purposely go there or, or anything like that. Um, you, you know, they do that a lot, you know, oh, well, we read the foot and blah, 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 you know. Um, no, they don't. That's just one of those things that people come up with that they said that everybody, yeah. you know, uh, so, oh, every foot's different. Well, you know what? That's true and false at the same time. You know, it sounds good when they go, well, every foot's different. And you just got to, you know, read the foot and let the foot be where it wants to be and blah, blah, blah. You know, well, no. Uh, is my heart different than your heart? Are my fingernails different than yours? I mean, yeah, we're two different people and one of us could have a problem. But when it comes to anatomy, all right, how, how would we even be able to have doctors and study anatomy and do operations if everybody is different? So there are differences, but our basic anatomy, just like the horse's basic anatomy, is all the same. And so all the feet on all these horses are all the same. They are only a different size and they may have um, different problems. But as far as what they're really supposed to be anatomically, they are all the same. Just like my feet are like your feet. 
except I got plantar fasciitis, however you pronounce it. And maybe you don't, <laughs> you know, I may have toenail fungus and you don't, but anatomically, the, the basic bones and muscles and tendons and ligament and, and all that, it's all the same. You know, a heart surgeon uh, studies the heart. I sure want him to know the basic, accurate anatomy of the heart before he does an operation on me, you know. And uh, he, he might see something that isn't normal and go, well, that's what the heart wants to be. You know, we'll just leave it there. See, we don't want that happening. But yeah, so I know, I know what you're saying there. Well, okay, so, so this gal, you really see on this foot here, she really barefoot trimmed it. You know, um, this, this model here, the little, it's a little triangle with no, no heels, you know, and uh, the horse on his bulbs here, poor guy. And of course, what happens is the frog stay down here, as everything's pulled down, this gets pulled down and forward into the foot. So this frog stay right here should be clear up here. And you can see this this is all under pressure. That's why it's so red like that, um, I think. Anyway, so the horse is banging on his bulbs there on the sensitive part of his foot. Look at the bulbs on this horse. Somebody posted this. Okay, see how high they are up off the ground. This is a, this is a pretty good foot actually, needs a trim. Whose was this? Bernarda? Um, Kaliza. Okay, so this is actually a pretty, pretty nice looking foot. Um, good frog, big bars, um, <clears throat> but again, too long. So let me go back. But doing pretty good, you know, getting some growth in there. These aren't supposed to be banging on the ground with no frog in between them here. Okay, let's look here. Yeah, see, no frog. There's no depth of frog here at all. Just a covering, just a very thin covering over the frog cram. And then, you know, this is all pulled forward. But the front feet, that's the worst foot. The front feet aren't as bad. She's got some more pictures here somewhere. There, you see, this here is the back of the coronary band. Okay, so this is interesting. Let me get a, uh, let me get, get that imaged here. New share. Um, just a second. Now I forgot where I was going and what I was doing. Let's see. Okay. I guess it didn't open. Well, darn. Well, I'll just do it again. Hold on. Well, let me try it again. Oh, there it is. Okay. New share. Okay. Now, this is interesting on this one because uh, you can see, let's make this bigger. Let me annotate here. Let me draw some stuff on here. Okay. So the coronary band, you see it coming down like this. That's what I'm seeing. See that this is the coronary band. It's pulled down here. And actually, if that were to come up, then there would be uh, 
So keeping this weighted, this is frog right here. Keeping this weighted, it's going to add more capsule into there and bring this up to where this, and then it'll start filling all this in and pushing, pushing these bulbs up like that. So that was interesting because remember, see now that foot is concave, right? Now look at the angle of the coronary band. The foot is bent. See there? So internally where the foot is, it's also bent like this. Like that. So that's why you have that. Uh, this foot going to have that concavity too. OK, let me undo that. Okay. See, you can see some of that concavity there, that false concavity. But um, this foot also has some built up sole in here. So it looks better than it is kind of under here. But in reality, if you were to take out all the dead sole here, it looked just like that foot we started with. I'm not seeing, I, I'm just still seeing oh, oh. the lateral or medial Sorry. picture. Okay. Sorry, there we go. Thank you for speaking up. <laughs> okay, so this is that foot. Okay, see how it's got retained sole in here? If you were to get this down just to live sole, it would be very concave, just like that other foot that we started out with. Was that a different horse? I think it was. I think um, it was. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, what a sweetie. Okay. Okay, this is okay. And I showed you how uh, arched the coronary band was, right? So that shows the bending of the foot because it's supposed to be perfectly straight. And uh, it's supposed to be a perfect uh, level halo, coronary, like a crown. You know, a crown doesn't dip down. It's perfectly round and, and level. OK, well, let's go on. So anyway, to go back to here, what you're going to have to do is now um, start weighting this part of the foot right here um, and keep maintaining what she's got up here, not letting it shoot forward. OK, so what do we got here? So she says, this is Carrie Thompson. She's got a pony here. And she says, Hi, I've been following Linda Harris for about six months now. I'm currently rehabbing four horses at the moment. The picture below is of a pony who was the worst. Yeah, I can see the laminitis lines. Um, his feet had been trimmed into a pair of slippers. That's exactly what I did to my pony's feet. His his currently, he is currently looking better, but I know he needs more frog and periopal trimming at the back of his feet so he can release his bulbs, which yes and no, you, you still have to be kind of careful on that because uh, if you, re you can release that, especially on these ponies, and then they rotate in the capsule. And you just run into a vicious circle. So, you know, I'm not, because um, other than keeping my pony alive, <laughs> okay, and from knuckling over, I have not been successful with what, what I did. Um, her feet, I don't think they're ever going to be normal, you know, and it was one of those things, the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, before I found out about the heels, I trimmed those heels up one more time. And that was it. And so, you know, she gets around. Um, 
she's not in a lot of pain or anything like that. Um, but as far as uh, running a foot race, no. She'll never be a speed demon. Not let I, I mean, I just have not been able to unbind those feet, you know. So I'm really leery of telling people on these ponies, just trim up that frog and uh, do this and that. Because uh, if that foot releases too much, um, they've got such a pull here on the digital flexor tendon, it can pull it can uh rotate again if there's not really good connection up here and seeing seeing those those uh rings there makes me uh cautious so let's look yeah she says i'm a little hesitant <laughs> yeah okay i think that's good um he is currently looking better but i know he needs more frog and periopal trimming at the back of the feet so he can release his bulbs uh, can someone please point out what needs to come out? I'm a little hesitant and I need some direction, please. Well, let's go ahead and look at pictures. Now, one good thing would be is if you trim all this hair so you can really see what's going on with these cartilages. Um, already, I don't think this pony's feet were as bad as my ponies. Hmm. You know, yeah, I, I would take it slower back here. I wouldn't just be trimming things down immediately. I would take it slower back here. I'd let that expand a little slower. Um, I don't see, you can see rotation in these frogs. They'll look really weird and you'll see really weird stretched periopal. Um, but if these cartilages are really bound down here, um, yeah, to me, me, I wouldn't want to re release them overly fast. But I would trim all this hair and really take a look at the cartilages and see how bound this pony was. When cast, would you? What? Cast, maybe cast, if to support them. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really. I, in my opinion, maybe not. Mm -hmm. If the pony's walking and doing well, you know. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't always make a determination on that. You know, when I cast them is when. Uh, they're in rotation and and they need to stabilize the whole foot and they really need support or they really need support in the heels to help the heels grow or something like that. So I just don't have all answers for that. I have a casting question that, and we can talk about it any time, but okay. I thought I'd just throw it out. Um, for when the time is right today, I need an alternative because my uh, rotated horse will not pick up his front feet long enough. For oh, me to wow. Yeah. So I got to do everything while he's <clears throat> lying Laying down. down. Yeah. And so if I put the fiberglass tape on, um, then I'll, you know, probably I had watched as advised the um, YouTube videos that are out there. And they all recommend making sure you have the pressure on the foot while not only you're up after you've applied that dim, but um, after you've applied the fiberglass tape, because otherwise, it, you know, it shrinks, I guess, a little bit as it uh -huh. dries. So you know, when the time is right, I'd love to talk about maybe some other ideas because I'm just hell bent for leather that I'm going to get that dim on there. And <laughs> it's not. Happening. Yeah. So I can't out think outside my box. <laughs> Can hey, I, I go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna. Can I talk about that? Yes, please do. Because it's um, I would still do it. I mean, they recommend that because it it makes it uh, easy to con uh, to make it flat so that it's kind of balanced on the bottom. But if you don't do that and you let it harden, 
then just rasp it. Will he, she pick up their foot long enough that once it hardens, you can actually rasp it like you would the foot. So then you could create the balance by that, oops, sorry, by that part. No. No, I can do that, that with the hind feet, but he's just, and I'm not sure if it's, I'm not sure why it is. I'm not sure if it's, uh, he can't balance on three feet. So we're kind of taking this time to like work a little bit on that as well, but I don't know the reason. Yeah. So I, I really can't count on that. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder if you could trim them when he's down. Oh, I do know you can rasp them to balance them after it's hardened if if he wouldn't or she wouldn't put uh he right uh yeah. wouldn't put yeah. put yeah. put weight on on it yeah. so it's just kind of a way to that method is not ideally you should not even um you don't want to have it weight bearing because it stretches it a little bit so you want it for in my case i want it to hold it i let it dry a little bit first and then put it down so that i don't lose it there's not too much stretching when the horse's foot expands so that might be you know an okay. option would be if you could even rasp when they're on the ground and mm -hmm. get it balanced and flat so then he's not um you know unbalanced when he's actually walking in them that gotcha. might be it that would work i would think I, yeah i think he would he would probably let me rasp while he's while he's lying down mm -hmm. Yeah. Or use a piece of wood and just push it on the bottom so that mm -hmm. it's a flat surface. So at least then you don't have too much to rasp. So it kind of compresses it to at least be somewhat flat as he would be weight bearing when he lands on the ground. I see you what that. you're saying. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So it will stick to the bottom of the foot. It's not going to be like a pancake that falls off when he gets up. I know it because it, um, it, it, the problem I run into it is when I, when I do put their foot down, if I don't have the plastic, I use the plastic to kind of hold it together. I've had them slip off because the minute the horse puts the weight down, their foot expands a little and then it stretches the cast. So, um, right. So it's, yeah. if anything, it probably, if we could manage keeping them balanced on the bottom, the idea of the casting is to put it on and really not have any pressures or forces on it until it sets mm, okay so, so. so the second part of this question is um nobody likes to get woken up when they're sleeping because they feel like water's on them right so <laughs> i have to make a decision here about what I, and i got plenty of copper sulfate mm -hmm. but the i gotta work with speed so my thought yeah. was if i can um if I can just clean out his feet, use my scrub brush, get as much of it out as I can, and then salt the heck out of that dim that I'm going to put right on his foot. Um, Cause I found you can't mix the copper sulfate into it. It changes the consistency. Oh, okay. And yeah. it doesn't get, and it's not pliable. Cause I did another little experiment. Cause I thought, what the heck? You know, I got yeah. my meatball size things because Denise and I had talked and I mixed in the, the copper sulfate the way you'd mix breadcrumbs into a hamburger. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, no, don't go there, ladies. And <laughs> so I realized I'm going to have to season that, um, that with the, the dim. I'm going to have to figure out a way to flatten out part of it dunk it in, dredge it in the copper sulfate and then put mm -hmm. it on his foot. And so I figure the that the copper sulfate will take care of the stuff that I can't get because I can't, I got to choose, Yeah, you know, yeah. have a eat off the floor, clean foot or, you know, have it supported. Yeah. It's so hard when, when you can't get them to stand and you're, oh yeah. Yeah, you know, so my nerves are about shot with all I this. bet they are. <laughs> I bet okay, they so are. It's will... a hard situation for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but I think I can, I th if I can do it lying down and I don't have to have his feet clean as a whistle and I could even, you know, I could even uh, like 
Kani said, wrap the shrink wrap around them. And then if he hopped up, if I had one other layer of protection, yeah. then, I, then I would feel good because, because that would be about the best that I could hope for. Cause I just, I, I yeah. suck at duct taping. So you know what it's going to be like with a fiberglass. Yeah. And it's going to be like, halfway up to his knee. So I just said, you can put just a small boot on first. Don't, you don't have to wrap the whole thing. Um, okay. Do, do just uh, a pre preliminary boot and then hurry up and put a bag on it or wrap it with, you know, that plastic wrap you get at like Home Depot, yeah, yeah. the stretch shrink yep. wrap. Then yep, either with that. that or just have a plastic bag available, you know? Yep. And another thing is you don't have to wet it beforehand. You can wet it later. That gives you a lot longer time to work with it. Yeah. So, so, so I think I am going to need an intermediate step because it might be that I'm not able to actually do the casting until the next day. Yeah. Well, then so, you could... You could just put bag over his foot and tape it, duct tape it um, around the pastern, you know, because okay. duct tape isn't tight. You could just make, a, yeah. you know, uh, you, okay. you can even make a duct tape booty or something like that. You know, use a bag. I, I make duct tape boots out of uh, Ziploc bags. Um, yeah. Well, you know you what know? I was, that, that's a great idea because what would you think if I, um, took a padded mailing envelope. You know how everything comes in these plasticized padded mailing envelopes? Yeah. And I cut it out to be, or, you know, I somehow had it close enough to foot size that if you can imagine a sandwich where we've got the hoof, we've got the dim, we got the plastic to hold the dim on while I'm frantically trying to put this padded yeah. thing on. And then duct tape that. How long could I leave that on? Oh, you can leave it on all night. I've okay. left them on them for days. <laughs> so. Well, see, that's the point. If he's rotated and, and I'm supposed to be casting this so that he gets, you know, the support, the support's got to last more than a day, right? Yeah. Get out loud with you here, step by step. And Risa said he leaves these on sometimes for four weeks. Yeah. So... Am I kind of on the right track? Yeah. And you can leave those booties on. You know, I make these booties. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. How do I make? Okay. What I do is I take like a Ziploc bag and I just okay. put it over their foot and then I duct tape it around the pastern. Okay. Okay. I'll cut the, the zip part off. So it's just yeah. a bag. And yep. so the foot goes in the corner and then the bag comes up and then I take a piece of duct tape. And I just put it around their pastern there because uh, uh, duct tape won't get real tight. You know, it holds it on, but uh, it doesn't, it's not too tight. Mm -hmm. And, but before that, I, I have taken uh, uh, duct tape and made me a square. Okay. What uh -huh. you do is you, you take, um, you can put it on your leg. You take a strip mm -hmm. and put it down and you make a square going both ways that, you know, okay. it's going to cover the bottom of the foot and kind of up the sides. Mm -hmm. And then you take that and you slap it on the bottom of the foot and you pull the sides up. So it sticks, you know, then I take mm -hmm. uh, some duct tape, kind of put it around that. Mm -hmm. And or, or wait, I forgot a step. I put a sock over the plastic bag. I put a like a knee sock or something, you know, yeah, like a tube Those sock. White, yeah. Yeah, tube sock. Yeah, I put a tube sock over the plastic bag and I duct tape that around and the plastic. Is that for cushioning? The booty works very well. Oh, uh, what you what you say? I said the duct tape booty works very well. Yeah, I use it all the time as well. Yeah. I mean, you just stick the duct tape on top of each other, you know, um, like half halfway. You, you like you like building a pad. Like if you stick it onto uh, on something that, like a clothing item or, or even on, onto uh, and flip it upside down with mm -hmm. a sticky part facing you and then just add halfway, uh, half of the duct tape and then it, the, the next piece will be half over the, the, the part that you put already and the next, uh, the, the other half will be like free. Then you add and you add and you add to build up to a nice strong little pad. 
and you can actually put it under the foot and wrap it around the foot so it sticks immediately and then you can just do your thing wrapping it further than that. I mean, I do it a lot for abscesses as well. Yeah, and what I do is I add a sock over the plastic. I forgot about that part. And then another piece of duct tape to keep it on the pastern. And then I'll put the booty on that. And um, so, and I was trying to remember, I made them so I could put, take them off and on. You know? Um, I tried something like that, too. I took a kneeling pad for the garden. Yeah. And I cut it out to the size of his foot. And then I duct taped the hell out of that. And the idea was you could slip it on and then reduct tape it. Yeah. Um, you now, in my case, it didn't work out very well. But it, there's, I think there's... There's options. Now, why do you put the sock on? Well, I'm trying to remember. My brain ain't working too good today. Um, okay. I put the sock <laughs> on so that it wasn't as slippery and it, it just adhered and made the boot better. And yeah, that way you could peel I the understand. boot off and on, you know. Okay. Um, it made it so okay. you could take the boot off and on. Okay. With the sock. Um I got the steel. I should just do it here. I got a foot here. I can show. I can show how I do it on my little camera here. Um, oh gosh, we can so do that. I can imagine. I can. I know you're kind of. Today's not a, a day yeah. to solve calculus equations. So that's okay. <laughs> I can. I can Im imagine what you're talking about. I just was thinking. Well, I was wondering if she did it for for padding or, or whatever, but I, yeah, I think I kinda there's did a way it. to skin the cat. I'm just, yeah. I, I think I need a different cat. The, the one I've been working is bald. Yeah, one, of, one of the reasons I was doing it that way too was because I was also treating the foot with that uh, copper sulfate paste, you yeah. know, um, uh -huh. to keep, keep the coronary band soft and things like that. Cause uh, I want to see if I was trying to see if I could unbind her foot, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so I was wanting the foot to stay moist. That was one reason I had the sock on. Um, oh, but uh, I do it. I also put socks on when you have um, like you're, you're trying to get an abscess to heal and stuff like that. I'll yep. put a, a bag, a sock and then put that in the boot. You know? So it's interesting because so he's had an abscess before and I got those animal Lintex poultice pads. Yeah. And I put that inside um, uh, a diaper. Actually got these um, little swimmer type diapers, left them uh -huh. folded up, put the dampened pad as the most inner layer closest to the foot, then put the... Um, this folded up diaper on that for the padding, like you said, for the, um, you know, to try to create a moisture environment and then put yeah. the duct tape around that. And that, and also I found recently gorilla tape. Well, that stuff's is, bad. Yeah. That stuff. You could build with that stuff. Yeah. And that, I, that's what I was using. Yeah and, yeah. and it's hard to pull off the roll, isn't it? Oh my God. It's yeah. Really hard. Yeah. And then, somebody in one of these casting demos that I that I watched like you said Risa there's quite a few of them out there she uses this stuff called goat as in billy goat goat tape and what it looks like is gray thin adhesive tape you know how adhesive tape for injuries is super like um super opaque well this stuff is for athletes to I don't know what the hell they do. Wrap with themselves with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's super, they call it scary sticky. And why she uses it is she wraps the whole foot after she's put the dim on. Of course, she's got a horse that'll stand there for 45 freaking minutes. Yeah. So, it's like, <laughs> so at any rate, I digress. Um, she um, finds that it provides a really good basis for the fiberglass tape to adhere. Oh. Oh, that that's interesting yeah. yeah yeah but the point is just a little resource sharing there yeah that's great well any and everything you know it would not work yeah it would not work as a substitute for for gorilla tape but it it might be a substitute for if there was a need 
to hold the dim in place after it yeah. hardened. And again, I mean, I, I don't know what to expect after it hardens. I guess it's just going to stay there. Let's praise Jesus. Keep our fingers crossed. That yep, that's right. For sure. Thank you for the thought, the <laughs> suggestions. I'll let you know how they work out. Okay. That's great. And if I find a, I did make a video on how to make those. If oh, I can okay, find I that, know. if I can, well, it's on my computer. I never posted it. Mm. Um, so I'll see if I can find it. Thank you. And stuff. And get it posted. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, well, now, do you have pictures of your horse's feet on? Uh, have we gone over your horse's feet before? Um, well, we've uh, looked. I posted the x-rays um, of the rotation. <laughs> Um, yeah, and got and Risa said, try to trim off some toe and well, that's the way I interpreted it. He said shorten the toe, but it's already at an inch and a half okay. from the so I figured I better just leave that alone. But I haven't. Let's see, I think I've posted some individuals a long time ago. Okay. I mean, me three weeks is a long time ago. Oh, so yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I know. So what I'll do is I'll try to cat get some and Okay. Um, yeah. Do the okay. others. So all right. Thanks. Sounds good. You bet. Okay. So again, as far as this pony is concerned, uh my suggestion is not to go too fast on the back of this foot that you got to find out how bound that foot is first because sometimes especially on ponies for some reason if you take off too much periopal and too much frog and that foot moves in the back moves too fast um it'll just rotate this right in here it'll just separate and rotate in the dorsal wall and in the toe and the foot just go back like that so so anyway, take it a little slow and a step at the time. Of course, I err on the side of caution. If the foot is put together and they're doing relatively well, don't do too much to destabilize it. Take it slow. Okay, so here we got Sharon Smith says, uh, I trimmed Luna's left front today. This foot looks a lot like my horse's feet look when I took a year off. Okay, I trimmed Luna's left front today. <clears throat> this is the high club of her high low pair. I'm still battling be uh, bell flare. Yep, with a lack of a tight white line. I tried to bend or oh, blend the pillars, toe quarters, <laughs> but I suspect not enough. <clears throat> I did fix the bar, Z. so see a bit more after I took the pictures. Toe is three inch, heels are two inch. Feedback recommendations appreciated. Okay, so yeah, it's it's like it's wanting to be a slipper foot. So, um. Just a minute. Let me move this thing here. And see, now that looks like more from than two inches from here to here. I wonder where she's measuring two inches at. From here to here. Because right about here is about an, oh, I guess maybe once you get back behind there. Okay. Um, it, what deceives you is when you see this piece here. <clears throat> Okay, so on this foot, what I'm saying is she's going to have to trim this piece off here and then bevel it, I think, club feet. Um, let's keep looking. Yap wants to split in the middle. So... this here you can you can take this down right here without taking uh see this area here whenever you see this rounded like this you know that this area is growing now 
you can have a, a curved hairline because the back of the foot is pulled down, but this isn't pulled down all that that bad. Um, uh, I think this this area here needs to be trimmed. Wait a minute here. Let me get the annotate. Okay, so see that in there? That and then beveled. See, this is wanting to, and like what I do, and may I'll show you some pictures here in a minute. When I got a really dished foot is I put just a little cut line between the dish tubules, not all the way through the wall, but about uh, not quite a halfway through so that the horn tubules on top don't follow uh, the ones that are really curved beneath and they're more tended to grow down straight. Okay, so again, this is a piece that we all tend to allow to grow way too much right here. And all this push up here, which again, this could be partial foot binding and partial jamming of the wall as well, because we tend to not trim this area of the foot correct. We, we tend to not trim anything correct, <laughs> actually. But uh, at different times, different things kind of take over. Let's see. OK, let's keep going. Hmm. OK, so what we see here is she needs to be more decisive on her bars here. You got to be more decisive on your bars. You got to. Uh, detail things out a little more and I'm going to save this image and enlarge it. Okay, just from here. Okay. Okay, so she did trim it a little here, the bars, but uh, here's what I want you to see is this funky little corner here. Okay, now if you look up here, let me uh, annotate here. Um, okay, so here's before trim and you can kind of see that there's the bar. Okay, here's the wall. Okay, and then when you trim it, Let's see. Well, I have to undo it. Doesn't want to. Okay. When you trim it, let's go down here. You got this number going on. Right here. See, she did trim some, but look at the hook that's left here. See that? Okay, so when you, and, and here, she just, just left this high, and I don't see any lines for where she mapped the bars. That's why you have to map the bars, um, which right here to the inside of the heel here. Okay, and here to the inside of the heel, right there, I come up against the heel. And then, uh, okay, so then you want to clean out this line. Oh, that ain't working. Just a minute here. Come up here, come right through there, and trim down to there. See, all of this bar here would have to come off. And you see here, how she left this little hook. You got to come all the way through that and then down like that. So ultimately a bar is going to be about like so. Like so. 
So map your bars. Um, leaving, kind of leaving a little too much here. And those are hard outer horn tubules. And you got some separation here. Um, really need the, to kind of come over a little more and just kind of bevel that off a little more uh, because that's going to be levers. And uh, is the horse going to be sore if I do that? Well, I don't know. Is the horse sore now? Is his feet right now? Um, might be for a few days. Might need some uh, support and stability for a few days or, you know, not to be rode for a few days or, you know, but you got to do something to get the leverage off the walls so that they can suck in. See? That's why um, another good thing on a foot like this would be to do a serious trim where you really took some leverage off these walls, except for to here. Okay. And then cast the foot and that's going to suck everything in. See the separation here? Okay. Let's clear all drawings. Um, Let's see. Let's go back to that. Yeah. I don't know what I'm looking at. Is this later? Has she already done all this? Irregardless, all of this is way too much for this horse to have. And w when you see a growth ring like that, that's not correct. So, um, too much toe, too much. Look at the horn tubules going clear down here. They're longer here in the sides of the toe because she didn't get this trim back. See what I was just showing you? Around here, see, when she did the trim, see, people are afraid to bevel that wall over more um, because they're afraid their horse is going to get sore. Well, what happens uh, when you don't do it? Uh, when you don't do it, uh, it never corrects itself because these are like levers on each side of the foot pulling that flare out. And so if we look at the foot here, okay, it may look a little nicer. Okay, this must be four and this is after. That's what she's doing. Okay, uh, left too much foot here. See, and so this whole area cannot go back. Now, I can understand the reasoning. You want to leave some wall, but in this case, that wall is flared out and separated, and you're not doing the horse any favors by trying to uh, preserve that because it's, it's like a torn fingernail. The difference being that uh, on these horses, when you got laminar separation, it really can suck back, I think, and stabilize some, whereas your fingernail don't really do that when it's torn off. But by keeping this here, um, you just add an insult to injury. Okay. Say so better, better to go ahead and get that leverage off there. Uh, even if you bevel it to the white line um, and then uh, cast the foot for a couple weeks, um, like do a white line trim all the way around, except maybe right here, and uh, put then a circumference cast on it to hold it all together to you add stabilization to what you've taken away because the foot ain't stable anyway. She's got laminar tearing and pulling all in here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Um, you can see that um, there's some stretching going on back here, but she's got some heels coming in, so that's a good deal. See, that looks pretty good right there, but got to correct that toe. Get that toe corrected and them horn tubules coming back and that toe tightened up 
and uh, it, do this horse a world of good because if you don't, then you're going to stay in limbo out there uh, for quite a while, maybe uh, for good. Now that looks a little better, but again, still not taken off this flare here. We'll just keep perpetuating it. Oh, hold on. I got a phone call. Just a second. Okay, oh, you know, come back. Okay, does anybody else have any observations here? Something they see? Just looks sore. I wonder if it's, it, did she say it was sound or not? I can't remember. Um, I don't, I don't know. See, now, if this is Sharon, I think she's trimming this horse for somebody else, maybe. And that makes it very difficult to do what you need to do as well. Because you're like uh, doing this fine balancing line between, well, you know, if the horse gets sore, the person's going to think it's my fault when actually it's just, you know, look, look, see, you see, doesn't it look like that capsule's being pulled off? Yeah. You know? Um, and so when you, uh, are trimming for somebody else, you, you're trying to, uh, do this fine line, you know, when, uh, I, I don't know the whole situation. I have to read it all. Well, she didn't say a whole lot. Um, maybe this is her horse. I can't, I just can't remember everybody's, what everybody's situation is, you know? But I know these feet need to be trimmed shorter to get the leverage off and to tighten them up. Um, it, okay. I just read it. It said it was the toe was three inches, but it looks way longer than that. Yeah, it sure does, doesn't it? Yeah, and the heels say two. I could see that in, in the wrong spot. but Well, see, though, the toe here is three inches. Yeah. But look, this is way longer than yeah. Then it should be in here because, you know, you're supposed to have like the length here. Um, and of course, because of the flare, that makes the foot lower to the ground as well. Um, and to where if it was standing up straight and at a steeper angle, the foot would be higher off the ground, the internal foot. Um, so this part here, okay, is has taken over the whole foot, these, these uh, toe quarters. and right in there um so you got to do like a serious trim look look at look at the uh uh the growth rings see not supposed to look like that see that shows uh too high let's see wonder See, now you can see, see how that's jammed up there? And, and right there, that should be lowered a little bit. And so what's happened is, what happens is it will, it takes the path of least resistance. Okay, you see this growth ring going like that? Well, this growth ring here, it, this, the hoof should be shaped just like that. See, going right that around the corner. Uh, and over here, see, looky there. See, there's no way that you can leave this hoping that you're not going to make your horse sore and have it correct itself. You know, um, would I become the bad person <laughs> when I tell people that? Um, and so you have some people teaching, oh, just leave it, leave it for six weeks. You know, well, you can't leave something like this for six weeks. It's, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Some stuff you can leave 
uh, and not trim for a while. But other stuff, you just need to take in hand and do what needs to be done. Give the horse support, um, get the foot together, get it, get things growing, you know, in the right direction. And then when you trim, no, your horse will not be sore because you have brought the foot back together the way it's supposed to be. But a lot of times when you first go to correct some of these things, you know, because uh, what happens is these horses get distortion and then the feet stabilize in the distortion. And uh, but it'll keep getting worse and worse. Uh, it, for sure, it won't get better. And so what you're doing then by removing some of this is you are taking away that false stabilization so that the whole foot and capsule will move back into place. And like this dish will come out of the wall that that's going to affect the toe. That's going to affect uh, the shape of the coffin bone. All of this, you allow it to be there a long time. It shapes. It affects the shape of the coffin bone. So anyway, um, okay. So uh, this is the one. Now there's somebody else has a similar foot to this one. Um, this is the one I posted when I gave up in 2014 just let my horse's feet go for like a year maybe trimmed in three times and just knocked stuff off didn't look at them didn't take pictures didn't and then came back in 2015 thinking i need to sell this horse he's going to waste and uh blah 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 and took pictures of him to sell him and then uh thought well i'll take some pictures of his feet and i was absolutely horrified um, so in here, you can see why it says this is Valor's feet as of July, 2015, after I let them basically go for a year since, uh, in 2014, I stopped chasing that elusive wild gravel crunching hoof. I only trimmed him maybe three times in that year and did not take pictures. I did not realize how deformed his feet really were until the deformation created, uh, was allowed to just grow. See, all these barefoot, tidied feet, you see, they really are deformed. And so that's why they keep going down to shorter and shorter uh, trimming schedules. Like before it was every four to five weeks. Now that they're getting everybody down to every three weeks, you know, because when you let the deformation grow, it turns into a monster. See there, look at that monster. Uh, now, when you're up, up, not looking, you know, when you're standing up there, you don't see it. It doesn't look that bad. Um, this is what I look like in front. I think I have a picture here of what they looked like before when I quit trimming. Let me see. No, only a couple months after. Uh, let me go uh, find a picture. Here, I'm going to put this up here. Okay, there's that one. And then this one. Like, wow, where did that crack come from? Then look at the bottom. See? And then, uh, then I trimmed it. Uh, and this is what I do. Okay, you see that? I take a hacksaw where the corn tubules curve right here out like that on these flares you just take a hacksaw and you go about a third of the way through the hardest outer tubules and so that as the wall is growing down it doesn't want to follow the curve as much because it's a tube right starts here goes all the way down to here so if i just put a little cut right there then it grows out, but it doesn't, it, it's more prone to grow down straight because these are the hardest tubules out here. So what a farrier tries to do to correct a flare is they would rasp and thin down this whole wall here and make it look like it wasn't flared. Um, so I didn't do that. So I had uh, three fourths, three and 
I think three fourths inch here. I'm not sure, but anyway. So that's this is after the trim of the monster foot there. Okay. Trying to figure out, oh my goodness sakes, I gotta try and correct this. What a what a mess. Okay, so see, I, I took it over pretty good to get the leverage off of those walls. <clears throat> but I, I wasn't trimming my bars too great. This is the bevel I put on it. I wanted to keep the wall um, as far down as possible solid, but I needed to get the leverage off. So, because the leverage just keeps you going. Now, that was in July, August, till around July 4th or 6th. So July, August, September, and this is how it grew out by September. Remember I had that cut, this cut right here, up here. You see how that works? It works really good. It helps those, those horn tubules grow down straighter and come in just that little bit of cut in the wall, you know, keeps everything uh, <clears throat> stabilized. Because when, if you were to rasp down the wall to make it look unflared, it destabilizes the whole wall and just makes it worse. And then they just keep rasping it down at every trim. Um, so you see, it was getting better. Now, this looked pretty good up here. That's the shape it should be. Um, so frog was looking better. Everything was looking better within a couple months. <clears throat> OK. Um, so anyway, Sharon saw it. And she said, interesting. I was wondering if her ski tip affected the dish. And would it be possible to correct in this manner? Yes, ski tip or no, because I had a ski tip on Valor from when I was first trimming him. I got x-rays uh, just to see, you know, just see what was going on his feet. And he had a ski tip uh, more than this or, or about the same, about the same. You know, does it affect it? Yeah, but guess what? You can force this wall to grow down straighter. And I think uh, kind of push that that under a bit i should get one of these days i'll get x-rays on his feet again to see if the, that changed any so yeah ski tip or no ski tip you can train that wall to grow down straighter okay then heather sharp asks can i ask what causes a bell flare my horse is showing signs of this now um well was somebody gonna say something I thought I heard somebody pipe up. Um, different things can cause them. If your wall just gets too long, your heels aren't right and they're grow, kind of growing forward and it's pushing everything else forward and then they don't get trimmed and the wall gets a lot of leverage. And so it just starts dishing out into a bell-shaped flare. Um, Let's see. All right. Okay, let's just go past that one. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like to deal with super foundered, rotated, knuckling over feet. They just, if I see horses' feet heading in that direction, I start freaking out and doing everything I can to get them go the other way. Or if I see somebody like, see, usually what happens is why this happens is people just kept trimming the heels out and trimming the heels out of a foot that was already uh, rotated, trying to make it look unrotated like it was a normal foot. See, and so every time they trimmed the heels in the back of this foot out the and pulled this internal foot down, that foot said, I don't want to be there. And it pulled up in fact as the horse stands there 
there is a constant pull of that horse wanting to stand in a normal position. And so, so they rotate back here. Um, if they're already rotated in the toe, then uh, this is why I say I'm real leery of just arb uh, arbitrarily totally thinning down uh, the periopal and frog and everything on feet like this, because if they if the back of this foot goes up too fast, then the whole foot can rotate. Um, the heels can become disattached from the heels here. I'll bet she's got, uh, she could have two sets of heels. She could have three sets of heels growing in her. Because, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, let me, uh, okay, just a second, uh, got to do a new share. And we're going to flip it around. OK. Eh. See, now, right away, I'm seeing something kind of weird here anyway. Does that look like it's been, uh, uh, what do you call it, slippered? You know, the back of that? Hmm. That We're looks trying to slip it to me. Yes. Yeah. At least there was some work down. That's what I was wondering. Uh, comfortable trying to get walking yeah. on its heels. Yeah. yeah. The one heel looks lower than the other. Yeah. Um, let me here, I'll draw on it. Okay, so this like heel goes three, clear I'm down here. And walking on the heels, trying to take the leverage of and this one goes kind of here, but to me, they look like they've been like they've been rasped that way because the horse can't walk, you know, she can't yeah, stand up. Way. Yeah, no way did she wear them like that. They've, <laughs> they've been trimmed out, they've been slippered trying to pull the back of the horse's foot down to make her walk normal. See? Yeah. Let me take, I take mean, a this is terrible. Boy, you're really, you're really, uh, you're, you, you're hard to understand there because you're cutting out or something there, Reza. I'm sorry, I'm not the yeah. Are you at home? Yeah, I'm at home at the moment. Yeah, I just got a not too long yeah. Let's see here. Um, okay. Um, Yeah, the whole back of this foot is rotated numerous times. See, what happens is uh, the lower the heels, but, but the back of the foot still wants to stand up, right? And so it puts it to where you got pressure all on the front of the toe here, uh, pulling, pulling the capsule of the toe forward. But the internal foot is being pulled back. And this part, they've trimmed the capsule to try and lower the heel. But they, because the foot is rotated within the capsule, the back of these heels, they don't want to be there. They want to be up, you know. Um, see, it's all, you look at the foot and you cannot tell. You cannot see what's going on in the foot when you're just looking at the capsule. And so you're trying to make the horse, the capsule look normal to make the horse stand up when it, that's just not going to happen. And so then you get this weird stretchiness here. See, that is, this is from the foot pulling up, 
like that. And you could have two sets of heels in here where the foot came loose from the sole and the heels um, that were there at one point and, and then started growing a whole other set underneath this. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Yep, see there? See how the heels have been brought clear to the base of the frog here? Um, see? What frog? <laughs> well, yeah, whatever that is, that's not even, probably doesn't even have anything attached in there, you know? Yeah, that foot's really, really been, I mean, you can see how the periapple stitch to keep the, the, the back of the capsule attached to the, to the high. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, they've taken the heels back to the base of the frog. See that? Ah, see there? It's hard to look at. Yeah. That must be so painful. Yeah, she can't stand. See, knuckling over. See what I mean when I say the whole hoof capsule is being pulled this way, but the foot wants to stand this way. See? Wow, look at the, just the strain on the, I don't know if that's a ligament, tendon, what, whatever it is, strain on the leg. Can you tell from that picture if she's done that um, rotation up to the coronary band? Yeah. Like yeah, it's have clear. Had that rotate right up to the right up to the coronary band. See the gro growth rings. Yeah, they all go up like this. Yeah, and see, you get this weird looking, stretched looking thing going on back here. Yeah. <sighs> you know, and then, you know, she, I think she just started doing this horse, you know, what a rough deal. Yeah, this is a new horse. Where would you start with this? <sighs> Am I God? <laughs> you know, me, I would... I would actually just, hmm, hard to say if you don't have the foot in your hand, but I mean, in this case, I would just support that foot and let it grow a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't try and mess with anything there because if already there's already nothing to do, you know, that foot is, um, there's nothing you can do at this point in time, mm -hmm. but let it grow a little bit to, 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 to settle down. I would, personally, I would just put a slap, uh, uh, the, the dental impression material at the bottom and wrap that foot up for at least four weeks and then take it off and see what you've got and then start slowly, you know, starting to get, the, the main thing is to try and get that, that heel support there. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, I And that's why, like, sometimes on my pony, I would just let the heel grow to a bizarre height and she yeah. was way more comfortable. Yeah, you because know? The, 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 the bone is rotated so much that you can't now try and take that heels down because the heels is not actually high. That heels is just basically the foot pulling up in the back and yeah. creating that look. So, I mean, people look at that and see a high heel where it's not, it's a no heel, basically. So yeah. you've got to just basically grow that area and, 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 and leave it to the horse to be comfortable. Once the horse is comfortable, you can start moving those... Uh, uh, those, those horn tubules back and trying to get them back into alignment. I mean, that's what you got to do. You can't, there's nothing much you can do to a foot like this. There's no soul on this, but you can see that soul looks extremely thin or weak or whatever it is. Yeah. And there's no frog on this horse, and now they've got the heels down on it. And uh, everything is a mess. So I, I would personally, like, I mean, I said in the comments to just get this horse comfortable and leave it alone. Don't try and trim anything. You can't trim 
that was correctly. There's no amount of trimming you can do or nope. taking off of that foot to do any any good. So let it grow rather. Yeah. Um, I would just not, like, I mean, I don't put, not like this, but very close. It was almost tickets for the horse. So I yeah. just slapped it then on and, 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 and wrapped it and I left it for four weeks, four to five weeks. I took it off. I, I did a very minimal trim on the horse. And I did it again, slapped it them on, wrapped it up, and that time I left it for eight weeks. And when it came, when I came off, the horse is now walking perfectly fine, and and, and I can actually trim the feet now, correcting the foot. Uh huh. So I would just, like I said, slap the them on, wrap it up, and leave it. Forget about it. Don't try and try and fix it. You know. Yeah, so don't try and fix it anymore. You can't cut any more of this foot. It is just nothing to cut off to to yeah. make this was comfortable. You, you see that right there? I bet the frog was right here at one time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, that. I got a point there. Yeah, yeah. The apex of the frog was right here at one point, and now it, it, you, you would think it was here, but it's not. You're gonna move that. And you're gonna find nothing there. The apex exactly. is gonna be clear back up in here. Yeah, because um, it all has rotated from the inside. Yeah, like everything is displaced. Everything is displaced. What you see there on the outer markings of this capsule, there's nothing really there. There's nothing. Nothing is in its place. Nothing, you can't yeah. map the foot. You cannot, uh, there's no way you can map this foot. Nope. So I think slap the dim on, slap the, 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 the cost on it, leave it for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then come back and see what you've got. Do the minimal just to balance it and do it again. And leave another couple of weeks. I mean, that's the only way you better get things to grow and stabilize before you can actually do any corrections on this feet. I'm gonna flip this around here. Um, just a minute. Okay. Yeah, that's. I mean. See, see how those all go like that. Wow, compressing. it's like it's bending and compressing. Yeah, sure. yeah, and look up here how that's so pulled down that way. See, yeah, so yeah. This going that way, the foot going this way, and up that way, with the whole capsule going one way and the whole foot going another way. And that's the pressure that's on this horse continually. And that's why she's knuckling over. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, that's why you can't just cut them, cut them, try and make the foot, you know, like a lot of times what they'll come in here to and do is take off this whole toe here. Yeah, no, okay. that's, that's another, that's, that's, that destabilizes everything. Yeah. Because that's the only part that keeps it, that, 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 that capsule onto the, 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 the um, coffin bone. Because at the back, everything is already slipped out completely. Yeah. If you look at where it looks like white periopal. Yeah. Back, yeah. The white, white, and it goes dark color and on, on the hoof capsule. Yeah. Hoof. Now, if you look at the top part, that is where your, in the foot is now sitting in the that bottom that they that's empty yeah and see right here that was yeah. where the foot was and yeah. now it's and slipped at, out and it's up here you see up, that's yeah, all it out. You, you can see where it slipped out and you can yeah. see that the, the band is is like pinkish yeah yeah and so it's growing a whole new uh yeah. periopal band here this is the yeah. old one um exactly you know, and so this is, this is, see, when they talk about rotation, they're always looking at the toe, but they don't realize the whole it's back of the solid foot. Unit. The whole foot is one solid unit. It's yeah. Solid. So the, yeah. So what happens in the toe happens at the back. Yeah. Now, sometimes, the opposite direction. sometimes the periopal is so strong that it will hold the foot down there. But once yeah. it starts releasing, then you'll see layers. Like yeah. you could see this, then it'll develop another layer right here where yeah. the foot is at a new position. And then when they take the heels down again, it'll just do it again. Do it again. And yeah. It's trying to stand up. It's trying to stand up, mm -hmm. but they keep forcing it down by cutting it down and cutting it down. Yeah. 
Um, and then, of course, the toe. The toe just keeps going that way. Pretty soon, they'll start rasping this off. Then, yeah, but then it's finished. They yeah, take that over it's finished. It's That's finished, it. and it starts developing that that hard, uh, gluey substance. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen those. Yeah, yeah. Those feet, they constantly yeah, rasp down the dorsal wall, and then it just gets this big mold of yellow crap on it, you know, and uh, from uh, laminar lucky. cerium and stuff. Yeah, that's if they're lucky. Otherwise, it just uh, basically rots away. And yeah. And the foot is detached completely, and the whole thing falls apart. Yeah, which sometimes I wonder if, it, like, I, I've trimmed two horses where – uh, the wall did this, but for some reason, some form of bacteria got between the wall and the foot and ate the lamina out completely. Yeah, so there's a lot that happens. It happens. It's almost yeah. like a uh, basically, but it does eats the lamina wedge type of thing away. Yeah. So it yeah. basically detaches your wall. I, I think I've got pictures of a horse that that happened like that. I must just check. And See, then, then it looks like the whole thing is detached in front. Yeah, it's just a cave up there. You look up there and and the lamina on the foot has cornified. You know, it's not yeah. bloody or anything like that, but there's just a big yeah. gap in between yeah. where there would have been a laminar wedge. And I often thought uh, maybe that's better when that happens. You know? And that if we could figure out what kind of bacteria loves to eat that <laughs> stuff and introduce it into the foot. Mm -hmm. See? Um, yeah, I've done two horses like that. And neither one of them were lame. But they had that yeah, big huge gap. There's no, there's no sensitive issues there, tissue anymore. Yeah. But I, I think it could grow back. Yes, it know? goes back from the top. It yeah, moves down, goes down from the top. So, you know, yeah. <clears throat> I heard yeah, that. Uh, I, I heard yeah. that chicken poop has that kind of bacteria that'll eat that stuff. Maybe it's rabbit and chicken poop. <laughs> you know, well, see, because this, uh, you know, they used to boil hooves to get uh, glue. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so, um, uh, and the problem with that is that uh, in using that kind of glue for furniture, there's a bacteria and a fungus that eats it and loosens your joints. So yeah. then they came up with synthetic glue, you know, oh, okay. and, and <laughs> stuff. So that's an interesting deal there when you think about that. So, you know, what kind of fungus was that that ate that? It's just like... Um, well, probably the same stuff where they get the really bad white, what they call white line disease. And you open yes. that up where there was that gap and there's just this black yeah. powder falling out. Yeah. You know, uh, I think that's better than if they got these laminar wedges and the whole thing's holding together. It's almost like that picture I sent you or that video I sent you, but it was with a big cut out that I've done. The, that was all just black stuff and yeah. coming out of there. Yeah. So pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. You could just see the soul just looks yeah, stretched. I just got a call now from the lady and that it was a sound now. Good. Uh, I'll probably see him tomorrow. Oh, good. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Well, let's go back here. Let's see. Um, new share. Go back to there. Okay. Um, you know, I found when my pony was going through chronic rotation that uh, the best thing to do was just leave her alone, let her stabilize. And then leave her. Do, don't try and totally correct stuff and stuff like that. Because anytime I did, it would destabilize her feet and then she'd rotate again. Now, she hasn't rotated for a long time now. Um, but uh, there years ago, she did, you know, especially when I kept trimming the heels out like that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Okay. So here's Carrie, Dis Dispro. 
let's look at her. I'm well, I don't skip that part. I'll post pictures when I get home of this left front when it was at its worst. So no matter how frustrating the learning curve or how many times your back hurts or you cut yourself. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to all that. Uh, the tack journey is the best. No matter how far you have to go, be grateful for, for how far you've come. Yeah, no kidding. You know, so well, let's look at her pictures here. Yeah, that foot looks a little cubby and bound, bound up right here. You know, sometimes trying to get them unclubby like that is not an easy task at all. So when was this? Did you have a date on there? Okay, so this is current. Um, and you see, see, this is a bound, a bound foot. And uh, my opinion is that maybe trim the bar a little more and maybe the back will expand a little better. <clears throat> yeah, everything's just still pulled down under there. And so you have a situation going on every time the forces are the capsules pulling one way and the foot on the horse is pulling the other way. So, so what is holding carry up? Let's see. Um, I think in this case, and what do you think, Riza, that she would benefit from trimming those bars a little more and doing uh, a casting? I don't know how easy that's going to be for her. Look at all those rocks. Um, but if she did a casting with some support back here, it might start pushing the back of this foot up. Um, yeah, it'll definitely help. Also you know, keep that soft and supple so things can move. Yeah. Um, what I've what I've done lately with a couple of horses is, I mean, <clears throat> I've just uh, cleaned out the frog right into the bottom of the collateral groove and right out the back. So it's almost like you, you know, some some horses have noticed. Even when I've done that, I've drawn a little blood at the back. Uh -huh. um, it's not a lot. It's not a big thing. And like it unleash and uh, un, un, basically um, <clears throat> the frog that holds us all put together. It basically just relieves it a little bit, not in big amounts. Mm -hmm. You still got the periopal. You don't take all the periopal out. Yeah. So you kind of just trying to release the frog from the periopal as such, but not completely taking everything off. So you are just giving that frog. Um, uh, it's almost like you're releasing the frog from the from the from the um, sides of the the wall of the the hill, if you can call it that. Mm -hmm. So that frog can basically move to its correct place instead of being pulled out wider and wider. Because I can see the one hill is running a bit forward um, on this foot as well. So <clears throat> instead of um, the frog being being, uh, you can see that frog is way too wide at the back there. Yeah. So it just needs to be opened up right there and those right in there. here. Yeah. 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 You can right see this is all pulled. It's really pulled down. The bulbs literally are really pulled under from, right here. Literally to release the frog from the actual wall of the bar and heel, whatever is mm -hmm. holding it. So the frog can basically just come back the way it should be. And then also do a little bit of bar work on that foot, definitely. Yeah. And, and, um, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't overdo it at the periopal trim on this foot just yeah. yet. Yeah, not yet. Yes. Um, no, not yet. I would, I would basically try and just open up the, the, the collateral grooves. Collateral like, grooves here. But you right know. down to the bottom. Yeah, you might draw a little blood in the corner, but you know, part of the game. You have to, you have to do something. Otherwise, you don't, you don't do anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's like what I was saying um, on that, those bell flares and stuff like that. Yeah. You got to do something to get that leverage off. You got to do something to get things moving. Um, yeah. um, 
there's some things well, you want to be cautious on, you know, yeah. um, because I mean, the, uh, <clears throat> the horses that I've done that to now for the last couple of times, I've seen a big improvement in their in their feet. So I mean, it's something to to try, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always try something new. <laughs> yeah, and I think this foot could be corrected. Yeah, definitely. You know, and stuff. <clears throat> it's still just it's being bound back here. Yeah, it's a little dip in the wall in the, in the dorsal wall there. And she probably has a ski tip too by this time. Yeah. Like Valor well, that's, did. That's, that's all the more reason to support the back of that foot. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I don't know what that, that foot is. looks very, very. That foot looks a little bit. That's bound up. back here. Yeah. See, very now the dorsal up. wall looks good. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Here is very bound up. Yeah. I don't know when very this cool. was. <clears throat> that could have been uh, from before as well because you 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 find that you go different places like was this before and uh yeah was this then later say i'm not like i'm not liking yeah i'm not liking what i'm seeing here mm. you know um this, this is, rotated to me yeah yeah that's what i was gonna say the way it looks like it's knuckling forward yeah it looks rotated Capsule going this and way, and also that that and also that that that, that dip in that in the dorsal wall and the hills, uh, you know, everything looks rotated there. Yeah, um, capsule going one way, foot going the other. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Now, but I don't know what foot that is, or when that was, or or anything. Maybe that was she, a before. It looks like an older picture. This might be the same foot. I hope it's a before picture. And not current, you know, but the fact of the matter is that uh, this is called the anatomically correct trim because we're trying to get to that anatomically correct spot. But I'm telling you, so many different things can happen and you can go the opposite direction. Yeah. yeah you know, um, this is why we take pictures, because then uh, you get back before it goes backwards. Yeah. <laughs> So this is eight twenty four. This is uh, just yesterday. So oh my! Recent, yeah. <laughs> this is the recent picture. I think the, the other picture was the older one. Was it an, an older one? You think? Yeah, this just the way here. the picture looks looks quite looks older. Yeah, it looks to me. It looks like it's an older picture. Well, I hope so. You know, see, here's the thing. Okay. Uh, uh, when we have failures, we don't hide it. Okay. When things go the other way, we don't, uh, drop people or, uh, not mention things or stuff like that. We admit it, you know, yeah, if something wrong. Admit it. That's the first, first part of, of fixing something is to admit there's something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because if you don't admit your failures where you haven't done things right, how can you then start to correct things? Well, are you going to discern what is good and what is bad if you yeah. don't know that your bad is, is, is your, your good is bad? <laughs> yeah. But I challenge you to go find any of these hoof groups, group gurus, admit to they a won't. failure ever. Oh, never. They'll never. They'll only show you the good pictures. <laughs> yeah only show you the good pictures um mm -hmm. yeah see that doesn't look good to me i'm not liking what i'm seeing there at all that that looks a bit rotated to me yeah just the way that the whole leg is looking sitting yeah the, the the yeah. straightness of the pastern yeah. here you know just, uh, unless she, she was standing funny or something um mm. you know yeah i know but i mean that that the, all the growth rings and, and stuff just doesn't look look right and look here too 
Um, sometimes too, you can tell there's a problem when you get a white line that looks ropey, mm -hmm. you know, cause it's thickening and ropey and that looks ropey to me. Yeah, and, uh, like yeah. And you can see where she's trimmed the periopal. Um, but I, uh, but I think, um, you, you have to be trimming these bars of just a little lower yeah. here. Um, so that the back of this foot, the heels will expand with all this. So I yeah. would, I'm going to have to tell her, don't trim any more periopal. Because see, that's, I think what's happening is exactly what we've been talking about. How yeah. if you overdo this part of the foot and you're not, and it's not taking, it. what do you say? And it, it's not ready for it. Yeah, it's not ready for it. And so it's releasing, but the heels have not grown in here enough yet because you have to get this piece out here okay yeah, it, it, you'll see it, it basically increases in very small increments and you'll see your growth right your growth ring will end up um uh slightly further back slightly further back every time you you, you trim this foot and eventually you'll see that the growth ring start to straighten and then you know you you're very close to the the correct where you want it to be but as soon as yeah. it still cools down in front of the hill that's fine that's still correcting but i mean if it cools down at the back of the hill then you're sitting with a bound foot yeah yeah this see how it looks like it wants to stretch yeah. there like we saw on that mm. other really I'll just clean the, the collateral grooves right out of the back of the the, the, the this foot yeah yeah clean it right up Collateral growth, but don't take off too much of this period. No, 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 not there. Yeah. No, I wouldn't take much of the just clean out that that whole this. stickiness. Clean this in the out back. and trim right that bar down and more. The bars down and over they, a little bit. Yeah, just that little bit helps this foot expand, helps these heels move back with the rest of the foot when it's pulling. Yeah, you up. just one, one small increment, that's it. If you look at the left heel, the left heel, yeah, it looks like it's flaring outwards and forward. Yeah. And you can see this is all pulled down. Yeah. Here. But you can't, can't cut all that away now. Yeah. No, that, that's, and that's holding the foot together. I mean, you know, that's stabilizing that area. Let yeah. it stabilize before you even touch that. But the frog definitely needs to bring brought back more into its boundary. Yeah, right in here, just a little bit more, and uh, again the bars. Mm -hmm. The bars will yep. hold your foot right there. Yep. So she's letting this get high. Right here, if we look oh, at the side yeah. of the. See how that goes like that? I'm not supposed to go like that. Um, but I don't like what I when I see a foot like that. I I don't like that. No, it's like it wants to knuckle over. I mean, yeah. Look at that that growth ring as well. It's like really curved as well. Yeah, it's it like goes low here bit. and high there, kind of. Yeah, not not real bad, but but this here too. See, mm. when you look at the bottom, see how it's kind of high That's there? Good. Yeah, yeah. Need to keep that I down. This is before the trim. This is before the trim. Maybe if she yeah. trims it all, she'll take it down a bit. Yeah. Learning to recognize rotation is important. I mean, my horse Valor's feet, I've had times when they were looking rotated, like they wanted to rotate, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's more mechanical, it looks like. <clears throat> yeah. And all that means is that the foot is pulling one way and the capsule is pulling another. 
Yeah, it's Great. just stress. It's been being pulled apart by stress. Okay. So anyway. Okay. Oh, this was awesome. This uh these horses that Dorota shared. Everybody look at those. Um wow. Zoomed in on all the feet. Yeah, I mean, look at that. You know, and then you look at the feet on the guy, the horse the guy's riding. Yeah, I feel jammed in the toe quarters. <laughs> yeah. Small. Look at that square foot. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny. But boy, those are some nice mares. Sure. Okay. Um, let's see. Here we go. Okay, again, this is a situation <clears throat> where uh, you can't leave this. You need to take care of this stuff right away and get your get your uh, uh, white line as tight as possible as soon as possible. Um, or you're going to be going back and forth. Let's see. Okay, so again, got to trim those gotta map the bars oh we already looked at this foot okay well duh. Okay. we looked at earlier yeah hey, um, like Sharon. who's there Sharon hi I got the end of your analysis on Luna's foot hi hi I trim my own own they're my horses um mm -hmm. this is how far we've come in the last year because Good. the top foot there is what I started with. Mm -hmm. Is uh, and the my... first thing you told me was that I needed to grow a white line, and that's what I've been trying to grow okay. the last year. Okay. So um, the, the top foot is, is where I started, and the bottom foot was just this last trim. Okay. Well, then you've come a long way. I thought this was before and after. Well, yeah, a year's time though. A year's time though. Duh. So I okay. have a question. Um, well, that's improved yeah. a lot, <laughs> a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What was your question? Hello. Uh, oh, you're cutting uh, out. You're cutting out really bad. Oh, we lost you. We lost you. Okay. Hello. Okay, are you back? Yeah, I. It was digitizing. I think it was uh, my service. So I switched it. Um. So I had a question about, like, blending. Uh, the quarters back a little bit more. I mean, can mm -hmm. I go back to the white line on that to like where the breakover would be? Yes. Okay. You can, but that doesn't mean that uh, it isn't going to affect the horse. Do you understand no. what I'm saying? Yeah. For a few days or. I don't ride her. If I do anything with her, it's a lot of walk work and it's out in the sand arena. Okay. So she's not. Um, that shouldn't affect her at all. And yeah. then plus every other week. So I hardly get to see them every other week. Okay. Um, the other question that I had was you said um, from the side view, mm -hmm. like from back behind the notch about beveling that, but that's back in the heel area. Behind the notch. Well, and when we but, look at that side yeah, view. Yeah, this here, this, is this the same horse or am I on another that's, horse? That's the same horse. That's the same okay. Horse. <laughs> Okay, so the notch is back here. Yeah, if you look at the bottom foot, you can see where my line goes. Yeah. And so I did the notch right in front of that line. Okay. But you said from the side view of that foot that I could take that uh, back further, but that would go into that heel area. Well, but a lot of times we let this area get higher. So you can take that down without actually taking this heel down. What happens is we let this get higher. You can still precision look at it from the side uh -huh. and you can take all of this down 
without actually taking this down. So Say, you put that buttress area B? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sometimes we let this get too high and too long and it gets forward and it's holding everything okay. there. So should I take that down to the sole level with the rest of the foot? Um, no, to the sole level with the rest of the foot, you said? Yeah, because well, the rest of it I leveled off to the sole level. Yeah, maybe, maybe not totally to sole level. But I'm pretty sure you could take quite a quite a bit down here. But here's another thing that's going to happen. Once you take all this back, it's going to all move back. And and then it's going to uh, push this up anyway to make it look yeah, like I it grew. I think I think do a bevel on the wall rather than trying to take it down to soul level because you're going to leave a big gaping arch there if you do. Just bevel it all back? Yeah. Okay. I can do yeah. that. Just so there's no uh, leverage on leverage, this wall. Yeah. Okay. And then in that front part, the, the front quarter there, uh -huh. uh, it, she still has a lot of that flare that just grows completely sideways instead of up and down. Yeah. So I'm trying to address that by kind of knocking it back with a bevel and then, and then level into the plane of the soul. But is there anything more that I can do in that area that's, I mean, I, I'm just afraid of taking all of that back to where I know um, what you can do is uh, you can put a thin cut about one third of the way through the wall, right in that area where it starts to dish. Like, did you see those pictures of my horse? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. do something like that. Um, that'll yeah. help things yeah. grow down straighter, you know, um, mm -hmm. Because I thought too about maybe like alternating, like doing some notching and kind of notching it out on the way up to where I still have some support, but other areas. Where yeah. Grow yeah, I've done that too. Like, because you'll see, um, first they'll break out right here and then they'll break big chunks out right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they'll break out here and here and you'll have this big, long piece of toll like that, which yeah. I find kind of interesting and then finally the toe crack off you know so they if they do it to themselves and trim that way uh, we can do this that and the other there as far as i'm concerned maybe i don't know my reasoning could be wrong because that's what i talked about at the first of this um how sometimes our reasoning is not right when we don't you know know have all the answers to begin with so right yeah, and, and I, I didn't see that notch out. I watched that picture, and I was like, "Oh, I should have got a picture after I cleaned that out." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you trimmed the bar? Yeah, I, I did. It, I trimmed it back more, and and I cleaned that little that little nub out of there. Oh, okay, good. All but right. The one thing with her bars is that they're so far down, and I'm already gouging into the sole area that I don't yeah. feel comfortable gouging more. Yeah, because the heels are bent forward. Yeah, and stuff, and and are trimmed out and forward. So because the bar grows there, they're bent forward too. Yeah. You know, but um, I don't, don't, I don't even worry about that. You know, it'll all correct itself in time. Right. Okay. We hope. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for all your feedback on that. Okay. Well, you're um, welcome. Well, okay. So it's like three o'clock and I'm, I'm not feeling well at all. Um. So uh, if you guys just want to have anything you want to talk about or like with Riza or something like that, um, um, I'm going to uh, go ahead and go and you all can stay and talk or do whatever. And I'll leave Riza as the host. Unless you all just, just want to go. Well, you're, you're sure welcome. So I'm going to stop share there. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Um, let's see here. I came so, in here late. <laughs> oh, did you? I didn't know this was going on. So oh, now well, I know. You can uh, watch it again. Good. Um, and because we did, did work on your horse. Did you get my message? I did. I just got it like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, all right. I'll so I'm going to leave the meeting.
And uh, I'm going to make, are you there, Reza? Yeah, I'm still here. Can I make you the host? Um, yeah, I suppose you can. Okay, and then, you, <clears throat> and then if you, and then you guys, just make sure that when you leave, you shut everything down so that the YouTube will, will turn off. Otherwise, I have a four-hour video on there which can go <laughs> some climbs that long anyway. But um, so if anybody has any questions or anything they want to talk about or anything like that, so I'm assigning Reza um, to be host, okay? Thank you. Okay. Hey, everybody. Have a great week. You no too. Bye. 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 So if I, if she worked on my horse, um, and I didn't see it. Should I just go rewatch it or should I hang out here? Which, which one is your horse? Um, Penny. Um, I'm Fawn Witten. Um, yeah. The one with super short heels. <laughs> uh, the, white ho- the white heel with the, the tri- one that- triangle one. The, um. I think I don't know. I must have gone a little bit lighter than that when she was talking about. Is that the little one that can't walk, like the one that's folded over? No. Okay. Uh, No, 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 no. no. That's a different uh, horse. It was was the one uh, trimmed as a wild horse. Yes, I I, I, I saw the picture first one. I came a bit late for that one, but I've seen the pictures and I and I and I see what 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 uh, your horse's feet looks like. It basically got no heels. It's a very small, compact little foot. Um, yeah, that sounds know. like mine. Yeah, it's very, very short, and, and it looks very short. Yeah. So, uh, and it looks like the heels are completely basically trimmed out. So it looks like a little triangle. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 just, I just found you guys like a, a month or more, a little more than a month ago. Thank goodness. <laughs> Is yeah, she sound? Like is she sound? She... Um, Sorry. I haven't seen any. She has not been sore at all. Okay, so that I've seen, and I'm on hard, rocky ground, so I'm amazed that she hasn't been sore. Yeah, so, some of them, some of them cope quite well with it, uh, with, even with bad feet. I mean, but the, you know, uh, so. Uh, <laughs> So Again? do I, I've, I've been soaking her at night to soften it so that it can okay. help it go back, right? Um, yeah, yes and no, because you've got a very hard rocky ground and if the feet is soft, you can actually wear more of that feet than you want to, oh. you know. So you're not so, really going to get any progress um, from it. I, th- sorry, what did you say? So I see you're not going to get any more progress from it because that feet actually needs to grow a little bit more. And uh, okay. by waiting more off it, uh, it's not going to do it any, any favors. So I should not soak her then? No, I wouldn't soak her, not at this point in time. I'd let her grow a little bit if you, if there's any way. I mean, is that feet being trimmed like that or has that feet been uh, worn like that? Well, um, I don't know <laughs> because I, <laughs> oh, oh, since I only came to you guys um, probably two months ago, I only then came, became aware of like, oh, oh gosh, I think my heels are low. So um, I was riding her like um, seven to 10 miles a week, just once a week. Um, mm-hmm. And she does have, I think she has a il- sacroiliac joint problem yeah, so, I, I so she puts one back foot in front of the other usually but yeah. since i've been taking and i think i left her toes too long so her toes were too long because i didn't know yeah. how far to bring them back okay so um then up to a month so then a month ago i started taking her toes back more and trying to leave it just trying to clean up her the back a little bit trying to clean up and take the nubbins out and um but i'm trying to just keep the toes back now so but i hadn't been trimming her a lot i don't think so Mm -hmm. but i was probably because it was in my head take the heels back take the heels back so i would do that at every trim so i don't know how much i took back i just don't remember 
Yeah, the problem with taking the hills back is also lowering it at the same time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now I know it's wrong. <laughs> you see, when, when you when you you know they always confuse people by saying take your heels back, but by taking yes. the heels back, you're lowering it. Now the thing is, the only time you do take your heels back is if you've got enough heel height to to take a little bit down to take it back. But if you yes. don't have heel height, and um, by taking it back, you're trimming it out completely out. Yes. Uh. So. Um, in this author's case, I would advise you not to trim the heels back anymore. Um, Correct. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> <yeah>. not. <laughs> the, the thing I would do with a horse like this, I mean, this is the speed is basically at its shortest, the way I see it. I mean, if it wears anymore, it's going to wear itself out. So um, I don't know uh, if you're familiar with castings and stuff like that. I've seen you guys casting. Yep. Okay, so now um, a foot like that, I would basically, I would cast the foot like that. Now, even if you use a bit of uh, dental impression in the, in the back, just to give that foot uh, a, a more of a, basically the whole foot, uh, a, a more of a weight bearing. And as such, like okay. you don't depend just on the walls to carry the weight, you basically spread the, out, the weight over the whole of that foot. So okay. it actually gives you a lot more... Um, even weight pressure all over the whole foot. So one part of it's not going to wear more than the other. So if it's in the cast as well, so it will protect some of the wearing and uh, it will give your feet just that little break so it can grow a little bit down. And once it's grown down a bit, you can then start manipulating the foot. Because at the moment, um, anything you're going to do trimming-wise to that foot now is, is, is going to be too much. Okay, okay. Um, and I have been stalling her a lot she's on rubber mats totally rubber mats so because uh -huh. i thought i would keep her off of the hard rocky ground so stalling her i was going between should i stall her or do i let her walk around and get circulation the circulation is always good the circulation is never bad thing, but if the circulation is comes at the at the risk of running uh at you basically wearing the feet off then you know <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a yeah you gotta make the you know I don't know what your your grounds like I mean if it's, is it very hard all over or is it just certain areas it's I'm in northern California it's super dry and uh -huh. just dirt and rock right now it's okay. dry dirt rock <clears throat> so there's no like softer sandy area or a grass no I area. have a, all I have is an arena with soft sand. Okay, that that's that makes sense. Um, I would personally, I would actually in a case like this, um, instead of you know a lot of people think if they throw the horse out into a big field or paddock, they're going to move by themselves and do whatever the necessary is to get enough movement, but they generally don't. You know, they either find a favorite spot and stand there, or graze at a certain spot and stand there, or maybe if they've got friends in the paddock. They'll stand and groom each other for hours on time, you know, but they mm -hmm. don't really run around as much as you think they or move around as much as they they should, in fact. Mm. So being out doesn't really mean that the horse has got more movement. It's just free to move, but he's not actually moving. So mm. um, in a case like that, I would actually forcibly move the horse, you know, either lunging him um, maybe twice a day, you know, like, maybe half an hour, twice a day, something like that, to give him actual movement, you know? Oh, okay. So he can put one foot in front of the other to get blood moving, to cut, get blood moving through his body. I mean, okay. them standing in one spot in a big field means nothing. It's just the same thing. They might as well have stand, stood in the store. Okay. So I would think forced movement, that is your best way to, to, to get the, the, the blood flowing through this whole horse. And I mean, okay. the more blood through the feet the more nutrients you get into the feet the better it will grow in this I and mean, you'll get a stronger foot anyway okay good um yeah the 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 other thing was the heels were kind of curling over because uh, as they were growing they were curling over which so way i was forward? um they were curling forward of it can you can you share a picture of it or something i just didn't um let me just i can't share a picture because i don't have a picture of it 
I don't even see any photos right now at all. Yeah, this no, I mean, because I mean, I'm not sharing anything at the moment. Okay. Um, Yeah, so I wasn't sure what to do with the little bit of growth that was coming in was growing forward and kind of curling over the heel buttress. Curling over the heel buttress. Yeah. That's that's a strange. That's very strange. Because normally when they wear, they wear it off, you know what I'm saying? Huh. Um, I'll have to see quickly. Let me just see if I can find your yours I'm, on one of the pages. I'm just Hello? looking at. I was just looking at it. I was. It's near the. At least for me, it was almost near the top. And she has the picture. You have the picture of your horse standing. Yep. She's yep. kind of thin. Yep. Thin, and she has a, a blaze. Yeah, she's on scene. First, picture standing and then you have the pictures of the hoose but I was just looking for what that curling over thing was was it the periopal um no it was it was definitely the back of the heel but I could have like just slightly filed it off because I thought if it's going forward I don't want it to go forward towards the toe so I was slightly filing it off just so slightly. Yeah, see, I don't see any pictures right now. And I did post three different posts. I did the back left, the front left, and the front right. Uh, this. Let's see where am I at? There we go, let's see. Uh, if you can't find it, I know that Linda did go into quite a bit of detail. On no, she did. she did. Yeah, yeah. she I mean, did. I think she might have even mapped it. I think she might have. I can't remember. She did wow. with one of them. So uh, I can't believe I missed it. <laughs> I was out trimming dog nails. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see. I can't find it. The post is live. You can scroll back and look at the post and see if you can pull it up from there. So again? The images that Linda used are live streaming on the YouTube. You can go to the video on YouTube and scroll through it there. If you're having really? trouble. I think they should be posted in some of our groups. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I would be in the group. Which group? Uh, found. Do you remember which group you posted your pictures? Of the mentor education, I think. Yes, I'm looking at it right now. Okay. 23 hours ago, I found there it. There we go. I can see it now, yeah. Okay, let me have a look quickly. Oh, yeah, your heels are completely trimmed out. That's, that's the big problem, yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that point. Okay, there we go. Okay, let me just get a picture quickly. Yeah, so if I cast it, I would have to wrap it around her bulbs. Right? Um, you can actually, you know, um, you can cut that part out. You don't have to. Yeah, this foot is really, really yeah. cut. You're, you're basically walking on your bulbs. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just see. Again. Terrible. I'm so glad I found you guys. I had hurt my hip, and so I was stuck at home watching videos, and then I tack just happened to come through my feed. Thank goodness. <laughs> my poor horses. <laughs> but my other one, I don't ride, and her feet are just, they're all contracted. I haven't put pictures in yet, but they're contracted, but they're not low like hers. Yeah, I'm so thankful for you guys. And I, I've been on some rides since I've been learning from you guys, and I see so many horses with low heels. It's crazy. 
that fit. That's oh, okay. Fit. Yes. Okay, so now I've enlarged it. I can see what you mean by this these heels moving forward. Um, but it's actually because the foot is bound, that is why it's doing that, because your heels are basically in the complete position of being trimmed out completely. Yeah. So um, the only thing I can see is like, uh, <laughs> I can't trim any more off the heels. What I would do is I would, uh, your bars are a little bit out of bounds, so I'll try and trim that bars up and get them straightened out more. Okay. And, uh, um, I would cast this foot. I mean, that's that's the best I can tell you to do for now, because there's nothing okay. else you can you can't you, there's nothing more you can trim off this foot. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I would I, correct the bars. I would correct the bars and maybe clean out your collateral grooves uh, right to the back of your frog, because your frog's going a bit wide. It's it's basically just out of its bounds. So just run your knife right through to the back of the collateral grooves, and then um, basically then I would cast that foot and, and, and give it a chance to grow. Because okay. there's, nothing you can, there's nothing you can trim off this foot. There's just nothing you can trim off this foot. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. my plan. Good. I'm glad I'm on the right thinking with you. <clears throat> yeah, so... Um, so the, the smooth on, is that what I get? Smooth on? Yeah, the smooth on is very good. <clears throat> okay. And then yeah. um, where do I get the casts? The cast you can get from any, well, there should, there should be um, um, some websites on it that, that sell the cast. Otherwise, you can get, you know, they, they do sell the, the same type of cast in the hardware stores. You oh. know, yeah, I've, I've, I've seen it in a couple of hardware stores where they sell them. It's a bit more expensive, though, because they use it for, you know, they use it to, to repair a hammer handle or something like that. But it's, oh. it's the same, same fiberglass cast. <clears throat> oh, fiberglass cast. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't get a large one. I'd get like a two inch or three inch for the biggest, you know, and then okay. cast the foot. And you can always, you know, what you do is cast the foot after you've cast it, then leave it for a day and then clean out uh, or cut down a little bit more of the frog, not the frog area, but the, the, the back end of the, the cast. Just so okay. the cross will sit on your hoof and it's actually tight on your hoof. So you can your hoof wall. So you can release the back end a little bit because the, the, the dental impression material will still be there and it won't go anywhere. It still stay there. So you should be okay. Okay. And then do I, I just do it flat on her foot, the dental impression, the smooth on, just flat. Yeah, what you do is, I mean, look, you're not gonna need a lot in this foot because there's no there's no concavity yeah. <laughs> or any, any, any room at the bottom there. But um, what you do need is you need to spread the weight over the whole area of that foot. So you're probably going to need something, you know, you, you're going to have to judge because you're going to mix the two together in equal parts. So, I mean, I mean, what, 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 what won't, uh, what, 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 uh, um, what's, like I said, it's, 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 if it's, don't mix on too much. You know, mix, okay. you, can, you can basically judge what you're going to need to fill that area and then put that in there and, and wrap it up, you know. And when she stands on the foot, she'll probably squeeze out some of it where it's not needed. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So so it's not going to be a big deal that way. But, I mean, don't unnecessarily put a, a ton of stuff in there. Okay. <laughs> it's just basically to, 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 to give you a, lot, a little bit more... Um, just, just give that foot a little bit more, more uh, 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 weight bearing equilibrium, basically. Okay. All right. And I don't, and I just leave the the central sulcus right there. Just leave it. Don't try to do anything, right? Yeah, I wouldn't do anything much there. The, the reason for that is when you tend to open that up, what happens is the foot can widen a little bit so i wouldn't mess with that right now because if the dental impression material is over there it will keep it supple enough to move it and stuff like that so okay. i wouldn't mess too much i mean if it's loose stuff if there's any loose stuff take it out that's fine you don't have to go and okay. dig in clean everything out. i mean anything loose there just take it off you know what i'm saying okay and clean your exits at the back of the foot 
Hey, I can't annotate. Otherwise, I would have made a. Let me see what it says here. Yeah. Yeah. Does the dental impression material adjust to any of the changes in their foot? Changes like what? What? What changes are you talking about? Like as the foot grows down, does the dental impression move in the cast? Is it supple? Yeah, look, that's not going to be that long. I mean, to look, the, the dental impression material actually becomes a rubber pad. Oh. When it it's, it sets up, it sets up like a rubber pad. So basically. What's going to happen if it grows in the cast, if the foot grows and moves, you're just going to have the dental impression material not sitting as tight. So it's going to only then give pressure when the foot is loaded. Hmm. But when the foot is lifted off the ground, there's not going to be any pressure from the dental. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like um, your, your actual um, void that you filled with the dental impression material gets, quite, gets bigger. So the volume of the dental impression material is slightly less now than the void that is that is now there because the foot has grown. I mean, in some instances, mm. I found. I mean, but this doesn't take uh, doesn't happen over like two or three weeks. You know, I mean, I had a horse that we did and we left the dental impression material on for about must have been about six weeks, if not longer. And what happened was because it was a shoe and everything, the dental impression material actually came out at the back because the foot has now grown so much and grown down so much that it's now created a, a, a bigger void than the dental impression material is actually filling. So it was basically kind of loose and it moved out, you know, and I said to the person, just pull it out, I'll be there and do, redo it. So, but the horse is perfectly fine. It's not like it's going to cause any problems. Hmm. So do I just leave the cast and the impression on for how long? A couple of weeks or... Well, I mean, generally, longer. generally we leave it on for at least two to three weeks. Um, three if it stays on longer, great. But 99% of the time, by the second week, you'll see it's probably been worn through. And if you've got hard ground like you've got, it's probably been worn through and it might start coming off by itself. So okay. it's not like it's a, yeah, it's not like it's, it depends on, I mean, you've got hard ground there. So it will wear the dental and not the, the, the actual cost. Okay. So, um, Thank yeah, that's you. something to watch, you know. Okay. And I shouldn't ride her. Of course, uh -huh. I shouldn't ride her, right? No riding. Um, you can ride her as long as you don't ride her on the hard ground where she's going to even wear it more. Because when you're riding it, you must imagine, you must, uh, imagine that your weight on the horse and the saddle and everything oh, adds yeah. more weight to the horse and more pressure on the feet. So whatever she's going to be sloughing off, she's going to slough that cast through quicker. Okay. So, I mean, you can always touch up with the cast if you if you have another cast just to, you know, wrap a little bit more on it. But um, ideally, if you want, you can ride in the sand arena, you know. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's just yours's feet needs to grow. There's nothing yeah. more you can cut off this feet. There's nothing more you can trim off this feet to trim it correctly. Yeah. Um, you can have to grow it first before you can have before you can trim it really. Okay. Because I mean, That's if you try to trim something now off it, then you're actually going to make your sore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was. Hope that helped you. Very much. Yes, I'm. I'm thankful. I feel like I'm in good hands. <laughs> no worries. If you have any questions? I mean, you are on messenger with me. Just pop me a question or send me Thank a picture. You. Or, you know. Okay, you, thank you, you so much. Oh. Something I can always send you a video or something like that. Okay. Or any little hints or tips that I can, can pass on to you. Thank you so much. I suppose a lot of people on this 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 um video uh, has given more tips on, on casting and and, and and also how to get the cast to adhere to the foot a little bit better. So yeah, I think watch this video from the beginning. You'll probably uh, get a bit more knowledge out of that. Okay. I'll do that. Okie dokie. Thank you. Riza, this Thank might you. have been covered earlier, but in terms of the thickness of the dental impression material that um, Fawn would want to be putting on this foot, what do you have any suggestions about that? Okay. Um, my suggestion is um, take a Take your rasp or something like that. Lay it across your your heel area, 
and and a little bit forward of your heel. So if, for instance, you take the, the edge of your rasp, put it on your heel buttresses and lay the rasp forward. And you can look through the bottom of the rasp and the and the and the hoof. You can see the amount of space that you're going to need to fill. Okay. okay. You see, so then you've got to make your judgment and see how much of the stuff I'm going to need to fill that gap. You know, right. it's, it's like looking into a bowl and saying, look, I mean, two spoons are going to fill this bowl, or five spoons are going to fill this bowl. I can't tell you exactly how much you can put in there to, to fill the bowl. But what I can say is with most horses that I've done castings with, um, especially on a whole foot casting like this, I used like um, four to five, I would say, I wouldn't call it teaspoons because the spoon that I've got is it's probably bigger than a teaspoon, slightly bigger. So I used like uh, four to five teaspoons of uh, of each each um, the, the catalyst and the, the base material, uh, which is quite a lot. But this foot I don't think will need need that much. I think you're going to need probably three three of each and mix it together. Then you get a it will be like six, almost like six teaspoons, and it should cover this whole foot. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when you cast a whole foot, then like I'm going to be casting my, I'm going to try to cast my horse's um, foot. And you had commented do that because those radiographs showed the, the rotation. I'm imagining what I'm doing is I'm going for something that's going to fill in the valleys and everything. Yep. And, right. and so his, his foot's going to be a little bit off the ground because it's not a, it's not concave. And so I'm just imagining I'm just covering everything that's already level and then building up anything that's below level. Is that kind of yes, yes, what I hear that's, you saying? That's going to happen. The thing is, is what I was going to say is um, you're, you're talking about yours being the one with a really bad laminitis case or deformed he, foot? Well, yeah, he's, yeah, I posted the, the pictures of last week of his radiographs. Um, yeah, okay, okay, that one. Now, in that case, um, yeah, that's that's a very interesting case because also, like I said on that horse, there's nothing much more you can trim off that foot. I mean, that foot is already, uh, I think, that to me, I think if that horse stands, it's almost like he's rocking back. If I'm right. I don't really see him doing back. that. No, no. Not. He's I don't. I see him standing. I stand him. See him standing, pretty. But he pretty wants long. to knuckle over forward. Um, he might be tipping a little bit forward. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I just I, posted the thing. pictures of the X-rays. I didn't post the pictures of of his foot. Um, I've seen that we we discussed that foot earlier. Like I said, and to 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 Linda earlier as well. With that foot, um, I don't know, were you here when we discussed that one? No, I had to step out from this, but no, you haven't discussed my horse's foot today. Yes, we did. I'm sure we did. The one, oh. is that the, the one where he's basically knuckling over the little white pony? Is, is, am I right? No, 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 no. That yeah, was Sarah. No. That, not oh, Meg, sorry. right? It's Meg, yes, right? Yes, that, that's right. Yes, Denise, thank you. I'm just so which one is Meg. yours? Is it the one with the black feet? Um, no, I, I posted pictures last week that are radiographs of his feet. There are four radiographs. Um, let me look on the page on my phone and I will help us out with that. Um, yeah, we did not talk see. about that when I looked, but. Uh... Oh. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out how to get there from here. Okay. So this was, oh, come on, here it is. I just scrolled by it. Okay, so on August 17th, I posted a question and I showed the, in the uh, tact mentor group. The mentor group, let me just get there quickly. Uh, mentor group, I'm in the mentor group now. Let me just okay, so look. scroll down. Um, okay. and my first name is Meg. So that's probably the easiest way to find it. Cause okay. there's so much to look at in this thing. <laughs> it's like, and it was August 17th. 
The 17th, you say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's four radiographs. May God. Yes, forget May the rest God. of it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so your comment was take some leverage off the toe and cast or short yeah. it down to support yeah, the whole on the, bottom on, of the foot. Yes, on the on the on the radiographs, it looks like it can take some leverage, but I see there is um some of not not all the feet though. Is this the left in the front, left and right uh, uh, front feet? This is or, all feet. All, all the feet. feet. Yes. All, all the, the feet, feet got to play on this one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's it's uh, you see now that this one right, the right front looks like you take a bit of leverage of that toe. Okay. And then you look at the it's at the right front now. Um, whew, this is the, right front is the, the top. top. Mm -hmm. And then the right, right hind is the underneath. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is the right hind underneath the, 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 the that's the right hind you can take the, the, the bit of leverage off. Okay. And then also on the left, what is the left hind now? The top one on the, on the, on the right hand side? So if you click on the easier way for you to do it is click on the first picture and then they will all appear in sequence. It will be so much easier. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I've got it now. See? Yeah. I mean, the collage view is not so helpful. Okay. Right hind, you can take some leverage of that though. Definitely. Okay. Um, left hind, you've got quite a bit of rotation there. Um, it looks like yeah. an, you can bring a little bit back on that toe as well. Not much, but a little bit. Now the left front looks like it, it, it has been taken off. Looks like she's yep. got a. She's Can you share those, Risa? Are you able? To, are you able to share those? What you're talking about on the screen? Okay, yeah. Let me let me let me share that for you quickly. Let me let me awesome. get that. Give me one second. Okay. Ah, I think there's too much learning going on, you know, during COVID. We've had to learn about all this technological crap and we're learning about <laughs> horse speed. And it's like, I feel like my brain is going to explode. <laughs> I mean, it's great, but it's also like pushing us. <laughs> the bloody biggest hoax ever. Okay, let me see if I can share those. Give me one second. Mm. Okay, stop share that one. Let's go for the new one. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay, right. Let's start with the right hind quickly. Are we seeing that one? I see it. Thank you. Right. Okay, now the right hind. If you look at this foot, um, you've got quite a big disparity from the your dorsal wall and your your actual um, uh, coffin bone. You can see there's quite a big uh, that basically fans out for as it, as you go down. So you've got quite a bit of rotation there, but it's not all just rotation. Um, if you look at, uh, you can't see it in this picture very clearly because I mean the rotation is not as much as as, as that angle shows there. This is also a stitched forward toe in in, in the same time at the same time, and um, your sole depth on this foot. It's not too bad. I mean, look for a horse with, with rotation. What does it say here? 32, what is that? 22 moles? Really, yeah, 22. Really yeah, 22 moles. It's not a bad depth for sole depth. So um, you've got enough sole under this foot so you can take that leverage of that toe in this foot. Okay. Um, I just okay. can't. You know, oh, let's see. oh, let's see if we can annotate. Okay, there we go. Hang on, give me one second. Maybe mm. I found something here. Okay. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Yes, I can teach you. you know, that, 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 that actually can come off a little bit. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Let me just erase. I it do. Just, okay. Let's just try that again. So I would basically just take some of that off in a, in a arc like that. Okay. Yep. I wouldn't bring mm -hmm. too, too much back, but try and 
and also not not engaging the actual soul. I wouldn't want you to take any more of the soul of the source. You know, no. I just want to basically, no. uh, basically, just want you to 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 bring back this take off. Ah, come on, man. my fingers are not working very well. Yeah, you know, like that. You know, take that off. Yeah. You know, and then give you just to give you a little bit of of a, of a, a break over there without engaging or taking any of the soul off or, or doing something like that, you know? So you just okay. want to basically just gently just get that toe slightly shorter okay. without bringing too much back, okay? Okay. Because you don't want to bring the wall back and then pushing everything back. Um, also, uh, I would love to see a white line, what your white line looks like. Um, okay. So this is with this foot, Okay. Now, yeah, at the back, you can actually see that, that this whole foot is like pulled underneath each other and underneath itself. And it's 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 quite a strange look at the back there. So um, what I would do with this foot is I would cast it as well. I mean, look, it's got nice sold. I wouldn't call it nice. It's If this was a healthy foot and you had 22 moles of sole depth, that would be great, <laughs> you know? So... Mm -hmm. um, this foot, I think, is not too bad. It's just that front part that you can bring back and 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 take that leverage off a little bit, and then uh, cast that foot, and you should be okay with this foot. I don't think there's much more you can do at this point with this foot, but that's the the immediate things you can do to help this foot. Let's see okay. the other feet. Um, give me one second. Hey, boy. Okay, there we go. Not up there. Ah, no, that's not it. Meg, how many degrees of rotation was that? Does it, I can't read it. Four, does this say 14? Um, it's no. uh, the left. The one that's on the. Yeah, the right front, I think, is what he's got. Um, it's um, oh, shoot. I can't see it either. I, I, from what I remember, she said in her email that that said it's eight to ten on all of them except the left hind is fourteen. Okay, fourteen. That's yeah, a lot. this I one know. doesn't look. This one doesn't look that much. I mean, you see, what, if they're looking at the rotation, looking by doing what they've done here and measuring the angle, they're actually um, measuring it a little bit. I would say this this is 10 degrees, but this is not 10 degrees. This is less than 10 degrees. I can tell you that now. Well, that sounds this good. Is, yeah, this is less than 10 degrees. This is more eight degrees. Okay. Yeah, this is more, I'd say, eight degrees. So that's why I say this foot doesn't look rotated as much as the others. You know, this one is fairly okay. safe. Okay. Let me just stop share this one and share the new one. Uh, Denise, I can, um, I can go back to her email, which is hard to find now, and private message you, not to exclude anybody oh, else. Because, okay. You know, yeah, with no. that information. But from what I recall... Um, she, you know, some were eight, some were, yeah, so See, now this most, were, this most were eight and then, oh, and there we go. I guess right there. Right. Yeah. Okay. W thank what you. What is this supposed to be? You're welcome. Is this eight degrees? That's eight what it looks like. 8.06. Yeah. But there's a whole lot of numbers in front. I don't know what they, but that means on the, I don't know, I what don't they know either. Mean. But it, says, it says a slash mark and then 8.6 uh, degrees. Yes. Okay. So this this looks like eight degrees to me. If I have to judge it just by looking at the, 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 the foot, I would say eight degrees rotation on this foot. So if mm -hmm. that is the degrees, they, they, they correct on that. They could be correct on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. It'd be 180 minus 171.94, which is about nine degrees. Is that how they measure it? <laughs> I don't know. This this is this is a different way of measuring than they do here. That's why I say I cannot this 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 might be eight degrees. 
if you look, you know, I almost look, I always look at them um, when I do a look at the, the degrees of, of, of rotation. Uh, I normally um, look at uh, this year, this over here. So if you take that as your parallel line, sorry. Okay, you take, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? That is your, your, your parallel line over there. And then you take the degrees from like, like that, okay? Okay. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so that's, that's how I would, I mean, that's how we normally do the degrees because that is a positive angle. So in this case, um, let me just get rid of all that. This looks more eight degrees to me as well. It's not, this is the left front, hey? Correct. Hello? Yes. Yeah. So now this left front, the sole depth also looks kind of okay. I wouldn't, I mean, look, if I, if I have to judge on the other one, it's um, 22, 22 moles. This would be, I would say slightly less, but in that range. So... Mm -hmm. And and you can see how the toe here, yeah, I don't know if the horse wore it like that or somebody trimmed it like that, but they've taken that leverage off the toe, which is great. So if you can do the yeah. same with that other foot, you saw what the other okay. foot looked like. And yeah, you can I see trimmed here. that off, yeah. Oh, wow, that's great. So that's, that's, that's all you need to do with the other foot as well. Okay. And then let's see the other, sorry. Hey, what am I doing? Okay, so let's stop share this one and have a look at the other foot. Okay. The other foot is, this is the left hind, eh? Yeah. No, I think, let's see. There's an 18 mole sole depth here, but I think it's less on this foot because they're taking the depth of the sole from the bottom of your 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 your, uh, your coffin bone, which I should take the sole depth closer to your your apex of your your coffin bone, your 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 yeah. actual tip of your coffin bone. So that's where the sole is the thinnest. Yeah. So it will be less. I would say that's about 12 the 12 uh, 12 moles there. Okay. So it won't be, and, and, and this this looks a bit more rotated. Yeah. It says 14 degrees there on that foot. Yeah. Yeah, this is the worst of the lot. This is the worst of the lot. I wouldn't say 14 degrees. I mean, if you rotate this foot, it's, yeah, I'd say it's, it's about, I would give this one about 10, 10, just over 10 degrees rotation on this foot. 10 degrees, okay. Yeah, a little bit more than 10. Say okay. 11, 12, 12 for the most. I wouldn't go 14. 14 is a bit high. A high yeah, number it's 14 and a half on this one, yeah. And yeah, no, I think it's yeah. a bit much. And the sole depth that they've got here is also wrong because they should take it from the tip of the, the, the coffin bone because the top, right. tip of the coffin bone is, is the closest to the sole, to the, to this, to the, mm -hmm. to the sole. So if you take right. that depth, that's the depth you should be taking. So this depth yeah. is a bit deceiving on this this this, this x-ray as well but yeah. uh, then again here yeah, it's got some sole depth at least some kind and this has also been uh, have you trimmed this one as well just taking leverage um, off uh i um i have not at this uh at this time i don't i'm sorry i'm a little scattered please uh wow my dog is really helping here um <laughs> the um the pictures are actually from july and i have um taken some toe off um on okay, this so, so, already so, so yes this, this x-ray yeah. when was this taken july 22nd okay so it's about a month yeah so i d i so, have taken some off you have done how is he walking is he quite sore he um, is walking um, sort of hesitantly. He's um, mm -hmm. and, and it's situational. Um, 
So when he's confined day and night to a round pen that has soft ground in it and it's been yeah. raining here, um, he looks, he looks okay. Um, he's being treated for EMS and the mm -hmm. vet is suggesting letting him be out at night. Um, mm. And I've kind of had to do that to some degree because of need for cover for rain. Okay. Um, so I'm putting a gate up so he can be behind the gate and under cover. So he won't be out at night is. So I noticed that when he's been out at night um, and then I bring him back into the round pen, I know he's sometimes he's sore and sometimes he's not. Okay, so he's he's basically trying to stabilize. He's not stabilizing yet, so he's still in that. I don't, I don't phase. think so. Yeah, he's still in that so. phase where we need some help to stabilize. That's what right. I can see. Yeah. Okay. Which is why I'm so concerned about getting the the dim on him, and um, and I won't go into the whole thing for the benefit of those who have already heard this story. But I can only do it when he's lying down. So we we got some good workarounds on that, and oh, I appreciate everybody do while he's lying down. Okay, okay, I yeah. get it. Yeah, get yeah, it. yeah. So more creativity than my sad little brain can handle right now. But through the uh, <laughs> through the Listen, wonders of the group, I think. So we've gone through one, two. Which one we didn't touch on? The right front, eh? Uh, let me check my phone here. That one, we this one is seems fine. You've taken the leverage of the toe, yep, which is that's enough. the one we started with. Yeah, so it's the that's left the one we started front. With. Yeah, the okay. left front is the last. The left front is the last one. Let's have a quick look at that. Left front. I find the way you break down the x-rays, Riza, is very, very educational, and I like it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> isn't it helpful? It's really a gift. Awesome. I'm I sorry got it. at your horse's expense, but yes. Yeah, I <laughs> Glad understand. I can help. I guess, okay, thank so you, which Risa. one are we going with that one? It's Left look. front. We did yeah. not look at this one, left front. Did we not? No, we started out with the right front. Unless... Oh, but this is the left front. Oh, yeah, this is the one we started out with. 806. Okay. Okay. I remember 806. Okay. This one's fine. This one's fine. This one will stabilize quicker. The the worst one is the hind foot, right? Yep. Yeah, so yep. basically, yeah, you'll you'll probably find that that will also because there's less pressure. If you um, stabilize this front feet, that hind feet will take a the pressure will take the will take the pressure of that hind feet. And then you will find that the hind feet will correct easier. Okay, I'll stabilize the front feet. Yeah, but I mean, look, you can you can do the back as well, but start with the front feet first. You know, I mean, we'll do. Let's have a quick look at the other one. Question: <clears throat> Is the horse in any of the hooves um, slightly navicular? Um, I'll, I'll I'll chat about that. The right hand we did. The left front we did. The right, left hind, we didn't do what? Sorry, I'm getting confused. Let's try that one. Let's just see. This one we didn't do. That's correct. This is the one that says 10 degrees, 10.15. Mm -hmm. What is my, am I looking at the right thing here? No, you're looking at it correctly. It's 10.15. Is it? Okay. No, so again, uh, wait yeah. a minute. My bad. Mm. Let me check because I can look at the. Oh, the 10.13. 10 10.13, yeah. is that the degree? Yep. So again, I don't see 10.1 degrees here. I see more of 8 to 9 degrees. Okay. So so um, what you've done to this foot is, is, is correct. Leave it at that. Don't do any more. Um, that toe okay. that you've, the leverage that you've got off there. If you can do that to all the feet like you did to this one, Taking that leverage off there and then cast it and, and put them on it. You see, this this one's also got thinner sole um, than the, the rest because you can see if you look at the tip of that uh, uh, coffin bone and the, mm -hmm. the sole at the bottom, 
I would give that probably about a 10, 10 or 12, maximum 12 uh, uh, millimeters of soil underneath there. Okay. So, uh, so Thank you. what I would do is, um, when you cast him, you say you can only cast, it with, cast him when he's lying down. I do, yes. Am I? Okay, go, sorry. I'm just going to get this thing sorted out. Okay, so casting the source. Um, have you got pictures of the source's feet? I'd love to see pictures. I mean, I, I can now see the picture inside. It would um, be nice to see a picture. I can send you some recent pictures that are um, taken after this. Um, these x-rays. Yeah, um, you can do that. Have you got some? I do. I think I do. I got so many damn pictures of hoof feet on my <laughs> phone. I don't know who belongs to what. Um, yeah. You know, um, Risa, I am sorry. I, I don't have what I thought I did. I don't. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this somebody's? Exactly. No, that's someone else's feet. I'm torturing three horses at feet at the same time you know the more the merrier oh wait i do wait uh yeah i i can private message you some of them i won't be able to label them so much i hope that won't matter just send me what you've got and i can see what uh, and maybe pull one up here Alrighty, and see what we'll do wait, while she's okay. <clears throat> pardon me while meg is sending you the new images would you mind putting that one last x-ray back up Visa. Is it not up yet? No, see. it went back. Sorry. No worries. Oh, I just have a question. It's Tiffany. <laughs> okay, Tiffany, yeah. Um, is it? In what I think is the navicular bone, it looks like it's rubbing against the coffin bone, but maybe I'm completely not remembering my anatomy correctly. Let's have a look quickly. Where you... Is that the one that we were talking about now? Yes, can you make it big? Okay. Yeah, that. So, okay, yeah, like, oh, where the heck did it go? <laughs> it's like, there yeah, you go. There, I see it. Now. <laughs> I'm trying to enlarge it. That's why it looks like that. Okay. It's good. Hey, to I, see what, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So could that also be causing some discomfort? And um, perhaps, well, I don't want to speak for Meg, but I understand that the horse is laying down a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, no, he's not lying down. It's just that either he hurts or he's being a little shit or I haven't trained him very well to pick up his feet. So, you know, we have to pick door number one, door number two or door number three. And so I'm going for the, the path of least resistance. In other words, I'm not going to fight with him trying to get him to pick up his feet if he doesn't understand about balancing. So, yeah, yeah. Um, when he's lying down, then I choose to go in and try to get something. Do a little bit of work quickly. on his feet, yeah. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. You know, I mean, the one that I did. Uh, I mean, if I'm gonna show you the pictures, it's the horrifying pictures. But I mean, this one couldn't stand. If I lift up the one foot, he couldn't stand on the other foot. <clears throat> we actually had to get the vet to nerve block him so he could actually stand and take weight on that foot while I'm busy working on the other foot. But after the second time. We, we we after the second time we've done the uh, the dim and the, the casting, he's now standing by himself and I mean trimming him. He's got nothing on at the moment and he's moving quite fine, you know. And he was like this, if not worse. So um, the thing is also this: uh, he had to drop a lot of weight because he was quite heavy. So I don't know how heavy your horse is. So let's have a look. I see this picture. Yeah. Oh yeah, Tiffany, uh, you wanted to ask a question about the navicular bone, yeah. Yes, it looks like there's like a friction between the coffin bone and the navicular bone, but maybe it's okay. the untrained eye. Look, uh, the thing is, um, this x-ray has got a lot of ghosting on it, so it's not like very clear and concise. But in saying that, when the coffin bone rotates, it generally, because what happens is your, your, your navicular bone is uh, not attached, but it's, it's, it's rubbing against two surfaces, your short uh, pastin bone and your coffin bone okay so it's in contact with two two bones so when the one like especially the the the, 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 the coffin bone moves down and backwards it's put a, putting a lot of pressure on the navicular bone 
not the bone as such, there's a bursa there. And that also there's ligaments in that area as well. So it does put a bit of pressure on your navicular bone and you can have navicular pain from that as well. So, okay, thank you. So I'd like to go vote for door number three, I think Meg uh, said, and I think he's probably just a, in a little bit of pain and a lot of bit of pain. And that's maybe why he doesn't want to pick up. Right. Yeah. yeah. So but, I'm but, just but, not going to pick a fight with him about yeah. that. Yeah. The, the other thing is um, with, uh, I mean, I can see that the heels are quite low on this horse as well. Um, it might look high because the whole foot is shifted, but in saying that, what happens is uh, that with, with navicular problems that I've found is if you always got navicular syndrome, it's more of a bound foot. If it's a navicular, a genuine navicular disease, when you raise the heel or get the heel to stand up a bit more, they're a bit more comfortable because you've now moved. It's almost like you've, you've shifted these bones slightly away from rubbing too much on one another or contacting because sometimes the cartilage in between the the, the, the bones where they, they're rubbing is, is worn a bit and, and, and it's rough. So it definitely causes a pain, uh, sensation of pain there. So by lifting the heel up, you're taking, basically it's almost like you're widening the gap between the bones. So it's, it alleviates some pain. So then if she's applying or creating a cast while the horse is laying down, should she mm -hmm. make the cast fatter in the heels to alleviate the navicular bone? Uh, generally, when you do the, the casting, your, 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 most of your material ends up in the heel anyway. So you're going to have slightly more material in the heel and you're going to obviously have slightly more elevation in that heel. So it will help with that as well. Ah, so the dental impression creates like a, a little false wedge, like a lift. Um, it creates more of a, um, a pad under the foot, which is basically form-fitted under that foot. So it's not just supporting the sole and, 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 and frog. It also supports your collateral grooves and bars. Because at the moment, this was probably as sketchy bars. So uh, the dental impression material will create a basically like, not a, I can call it a, a prosthetic bar, but it's softer. So it, it has a bit of give in it. So it's not going to um, uh, be like a, a hard and fast thing, like a like proper prosthetic, but it gives you that type of um, support. Like a sneaker. Like a? Like a sneaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For your running shoes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, did Meg send you her new pictures? Let me see if I can find it quickly. Let's have a quick I look. did. They're not wonderful. Okay, let's have a look at them quickly. Mm, you see the yeah, this is exactly there's it. three of them. Hmm. Wait a second. Let me see. Did somebody trim the heels of this horse? Um yeah, that because would be it, me. Because it looked high, supposedly, but it's not really high, eh? Well, that's what she's, yeah, you said that they looked high, but they're not really high. Yeah. But, but um, no, I've been staying away from, since I now know to, <laughs> um, trimming off his heels. Which foot is this? Is this the same foot or is this um, different feet? I, yeah, I don't know which foot it is, Risa. I'm sorry. I'm guessing that these are both, um, those, these, let me look and see. Um I don't know. The one that's the profile, I can't remember. I would say that the two that are the sole view are front feet and they're different okay. feet. Okay, let's have a quick look. This one over here. Is this yeah, a front that's foot? a front foot. Yeah, that one's a front foot. And then there's one that's going to be lying on a brush, and that's a front foot, too. I'm okay, just I'm pretty sure it's a front foot based on what I see, where he's lying down, and where his mane is. Mm -hmm. I didn't label it. I don't think okay, so. so 
so this foot, you see, um, he's got quite a bit of soul in this foot, you know. I mean, yeah. albeit for soul or whatever the case may be, but there's protection for your coffin bone, which is good. You know, you don't want to take that out because the problem with taking out too much soul um, you're destabilizing the area and you, that's not that's the last thing you want now the only thing that i do notice here is i don't see that this white line hasn't been stretched that far that's why i'm saying this foot hasn't rotated that much which foot is this the front foot yeah it's a this front, front left that's this, is front left. this is front know. left i can just see this looks like the front left okay yeah, so this um, you know what? I'm going to say that's the front right because of the way that it's lying on the shavings. Because okay. if it was front left, it would be more elevated because it would, because okay. this is the one he's, yeah, closest to the ground. Closest so, to the ground. Okay. 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 So okay. this would be the front, front right. My bad. Front right. Front right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make front sense? Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. You've got the leverage of the toe. That's great. No problem with that. Um, what's going on with the frog? You put some stuff well, in there. Yeah, bad shit is going on with that. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. that frog looks not healthy at all. It isn't. Not and these all. were done August 9th, by the way. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I've been trying to get this out and get this sprayed out with the DF Crosleys and all that good stuff. What's it looking like now? Well, it's been raining. So so I don't know what it's looking. I don't know what it's looking like right now because I haven't been able to, to check on them because he's because of the weather. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so what have, what have you got on in there now? Is that like a hoof putty? What was it's that? It's a uh, hoof mud. It's called Pure Soul Hoof Mud, and it's the gray clay, and a bunch of other stuff like D. F. Crosley's puts in his. Um, okay. in his hoof paste and mm -hmm. um, so yeah that's but I think that if I really layer that copper sulfate on the dim and then slam that on there that ought to make it done yeah, the only thing what I don't like about the copper sulfate it, it, it tends to be a bit abrasive eh? it's, it's quite harsh um, yeah okay you can put it on. Look, I'm not saying you can't. I mean, uh, I just don't want to put it on a, a raw looking frog like that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I do. Looks I, like could put, I could put more of this hoof mud, which is. Yes, if the art mud or something like that is better, or some of the red paste, I don't know what they call it, the red horse paste or something like that also works very well. Okay. But what sure. I am. Um, what I would suggest is clean the frog out, clean everything that's in there out at the moment. And try and scrape out as much of the black uh, gunk as you can. Uh, get yourself some uh, uh, peroxide, the hydrogen peroxide, like a 30 volt or 40, 40 volt, you know. Okay. Uh -huh. And take a syringe and just squirt it in wherever it's black. Just keep okay. squirting it in there and, and brushing it out. And you'll see that the whole frog will you'll clean, you'll be able to clean that frog and see where the muck really is and get all the nitty gritty rubbish out of it and once you've done that then you can pack it up with the arty mud and stuff like that so you're not covering up um bad bad stuff you know what i'm saying i mean I do. unless you've got, unless you've got some spray i don't know what type of sprays you got but um like antibiotic type of spray or hoof spray mm -hmm. like the wound sprays and stuff like that um mm -hmm. a lot of them has uh, uh um what's the stuff called um uh oxytetracycline in it which is a type of thing that kills bacteria and stuff and it works uh, in the absence of oxygen so it can be under stuff and it will still work oh okay. i wouldn't i just don't like putting something like abrasive like like uh, copper sulfate on an open frog like this because this frog is, looks, looks horrible quite yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. would clean this out, clean this out properly. Get some uh, peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, and put it in all these black areas that you can see. And take a little toothbrush and brush it out, and just squirt a little bit more and let it bubble out and clean it out. And once you've cleaned it out properly, give it a good spray with whatever wound spray you've got. That's a good antibacterial spray, 
and then stick your arty mud or whatever you've got there in there a little bit and uh, give it some cover. Slap the dim on there. Uh, what you can actually do is before you actually um, uh, uh, cast, you can actually put put the dim on. If you're going to do it while it's lying down, it's not taking weight on it. The best way to do that is you get one of these um, little punnets that they use for meat or something like that that you buy in the store. You know, if you buy a meat, it comes in little polystyrene yep. little um, yep. packages. Yep, I've been saving them up since you said that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so so you can take your dim, stick it into the whole foot, then stick the take the the polystyrene uh, and stick it onto the foot like. You can apply with hand pressure onto the foot like he would put pressure on from the bottom, from the top. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Got it. So so then, then you will create a flat surface at the bottom of that foot and you will be able to fill in every little nook and cranny there that needs support, you know? Will do. Yeah. But when you do the, the, the peroxide, I just don't want you to do just the area where the frog is. Do the whole bottom of that foot, okay? Okay. Already. Because because you're gonna you're gonna be you're going to be you're going to be basically um um filling that whole back bottom of that foot up. So you don't want to trap any dirt or rubbish underneath there, okay? Okay. So the peroxide and clean the whole of that foot at the bottom. Everything with the brush it clean. When it's nice and clean and everything, you can put a little bit of. Uh, your wound spray or any antibacterial spray on there, and then you can can put your your muddy stuff there by the frog, and then okay, uh, put, put put the 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 dental impression material. Take that little okay. kind of thing, and you can hand pressure it onto the onto the the bottom of that foot till it sets. You know, you okay. can see where it's going to squeeze out. You know, you will see. Okay, that's right, fine. And normally, when it sets, it just peels off that thing. You it, it like slips off that. Uh, uh, a polystyrene. Okay. Then you have a flat foot at the bottom, which you can then cast. But then you can use the cast without uh, uh, wetting the cast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take the cast as it comes out of the packaging, and mm -hmm. uh, wrap wrap your foot. Okay. Once you've wrapped okay. the foot, you can then then you can then uh, uh, basically take a little sponge and a bit of uh, uh, water, and just. Dab it on the the the, 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 the actual cast, and then you can mm -hmm. work the cast onto the foot. You know what I'm saying? Like rubbing it and, and smoothing smoothing it out nicely. Right. So what's right. gonna happen? You're not gonna have like a tight bandage around the foot, like constricting the foot. Okay. So you're gonna okay. work it so actually form fits the foot. So if he stands on it, I mean, he's only gonna move that cast or the 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 the, the, the everything by by millimeters. So it's gonna be okay. You're not gonna restrict anything. I mean, you can always come okay. and clean up, be, you know, behind here, behind the frog area, but leave the, the dim there. So I'll show you pictures of what I've done so you can see what I mean at the back when you want to clean it out at the back. So if you do think there is a little bit of pressure, you can always clean up, up the pressure pressure points. But I mean, like I said, mm -hmm. you got to clean the whole bottom of that foot with the peroxide to clean everything, all the dirt, everything out. Spray it with your okay. antibacterial spray. Stick your, your muddy stuff in there and then dental impression material. Put your 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 panel on there just to level everything out and then wrap it with a cast that is not being wet. And then once it's, once you've got your cast in place and everything is fine, you can then take a little sponge and water and rub it and, and, and just basically mold it to that foot. So everything fits, got it. fits nicely. And I think that will be got easy it. for you, you to do so what yeah, so what you do is maybe put something under the leg, like a, something just to raise the leg off the ground. So you have mm -hmm. a little bit of space to move underneath it. I mean, it's difficult to cast when it's lying like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, that makes like sense. Hello Thank you. Something, something more, more, more uh, like, not I wouldn't say pillow, but a foam pillow or something like that. Just sure, to get sure. a bit of a razor. Yeah, and that would be fine. But what I would do, um, like the edges of this foot, I wouldn't <clears throat> bring the toe and everything back. I know the toe, the side of this foot. I would just basically round it off a little bit, just so there's no sharp edges. You know. Got it. So yeah, that's about it. And and, and I think you can do that with all four feet. But I think do it with the two front feet first and see how it goes. And then okay. you can always do the if he's comfortable standing, you can do the back feet standing. You know. Yep. Well, I'll let you know how it goes. 
Yeah. Thank you, Risa. I have to go. That was awesome. Thank you for staying. Not a problem. Okay. You guys Thank keep you, well. Risa. Right out. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Risa. It's Tiffany again. I have a question for Lumi. Okay, go for it. She has a client that um, is getting some work done with her farrier tomorrow. And the client is wondering if she can book time with you over Zoom to help coach her, talk to the farrier. Okay. Which, which horse is this you're talking about? Um, it's not a member of TACT, although we're trying to get her to join. It's a little bit hard to get people to join the group. <laughs> so we're trying to spread the word. <laughs> yeah, I know people, are, they've got their own beliefs, so, you know. But we are you know, trying, so at least she's asking for help. But I don't know if you're open okay. to taking consultations or should I just ask Lumi to can, messenger you? We can listen. Um, tomorrow, what time? Uh, you know, no time differences. You must just remember that type of thing. Right. Where? I'm asking her right now. She's on. She's um, commuting on the ferry. So I don't know if she has quick So 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 when is, what time is her ferry going to be there? Um, she should be coming into port in like 30 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm talking about her ferry that she's... she's I don't know um, the time tomorrow. I'm asking her. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Find out. Uh, she, she's not a member of that. Uh, uh, she's not a, a, a friend of mine as such. So I wouldn't be able to Zoom with her. Uh, not Zoom, but a uh, messenger with her. So... If you can send me a friendly question, I can basically converse with her through there or are you okay. in contact with her? I'll let her know. Or, yeah. Excellent. Um, Thank you. What, what is her name? So if she do send me a request, I, I would know who to reply to. Well, I don't know. I'll ask <laughs> me to send it to you if that's okay. Okay, yeah, no, and look, get it sorted out like that. And then, I mean, if she wants to, I have no problem. She can call me or I can call her. We can have a chat. If she wants to chat to a farrier, we can have a chat. It's not a problem at all. If you need awesome. a little bit of advice, you know, we can we can always share some ideas and see to help a horse. That's the main thing. Awesome. 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 Thank you. Yeah, just let me know what when in and in, in time wise. I mean, I don't know what um where is she in, in, in what what part of the state is she? We're in the eastern time zone. So I think it's minus five. So you guys, I'm five hours ahead of you guys. You're five hours ahead. Okay. Okay. So, okay, that's fine. Doesn't matter. That that's perfect. It's not a problem. She's so yeah, whenever whenever she's ready, I mean, I mean, she can just give me a call or send me a message, and then I can we can connect and we can have a chat. And you know, I mean, should I have time tomorrow by that time anyway? Okay. Yeah, let, yeah. Her, let her know. I mean, she can send me a friendly request, a friend request and I can uh, accept it. And then we can chat on me Messenger or we can uh, video call on Messenger. That would be easier. Perfect. Yeah. And then gonna, she can send me oh, pictures through Messenger and I can have a look at the pictures and then we can discuss the pictures in the call, you know, and see where we can do things to, to, to better horse. Is the ferry going to put shoes on the horse or is it just trimming? Uh, I believe the horse is currently shod. So okay. she sent me two pictures if you want me to share them with you. Yeah, share it with me. Why not? I can have a look in the, if she does not already got a head start. Okay. So shall I messenger them to you? Yeah, messenger them for me. To me yeah, that would be the easiest. Yeah. Okay. And I think she wrote back that she thinks her name on Facebook is Anne. So Anne. stand by for a. <laughs> request okay. for you. <laughs> okay, if I see Anne, I'm just going to accept. Yes. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's the right one. <laughs> comes in peace. Okay, so hold on. Here comes a... Hmm. How can I send this to you? On Messenger? Yeah. Save as. Save. And let's just call it Anne. Okay. It's coming... I'm coming. Okay, just send it. This is the one image that I have. Only got one. Only the one. Okay, let me have a look quickly. 
Oh, it's got a shoe on. <laughs> yeah. Um, here, I'll message you her name so that you'll have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can't see much about this fit, but I mean, I can see it's got aluminum shoes on, still racing plates on. To me, it didn't look um, balanced. Like the right side looks very different than the left side. Yeah, a lot of horses do have, uh, <laughs> we'll have to see when the shoe is off, you know, but okay. I see the right side looks a bit wider than the left yeah. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, it kind of looks like the heels are quite low too, and yeah, that shoe just looks like it's a little bit too small for that horse. Anyway, the rest of the group can't see what we see. Just so you know. Oh, oh, <laughs> must I share it or not? Yeah, you have to share it. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know if you want me to share that, so I didn't. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Just so you can see what we're seeing. Okay, let's just get back very quickly. Come on. Yeah, this is not much you can see on the picture, but at least. Um, There we go. Can you see it now? Yes, thank you. Okay. So yeah, you see the the this. Um, let's just have a look at this. This idea is a bit wider than this idea. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, it could be that the shoe has shifted also because this year looks like it's come off the shoe anyway. So he's due for a shoeing. Mm. So the shoe could have shifted a little bit. I mean, this is an aluminum shoe. They tend to have a bit more uh, uh, movement in them. So, but I can see already that the, the actual... Ah, come on, what am I doing? The soup here yeah, is not very balanced. And not just that, it looks like the heels are quite low. Mm -hmm. And the shoe looks slightly small, but I mean, that could be because it's maybe just overdue for a shoeing. So that could also be, and then again, I mean, the shoe is a little bit small. It says it's a steel, not aluminum shoe. This is aluminum shoe, though. Is it was the steel shoe? That's what is she said. Like, oh. Oh, well, could be. I mean, it looks like aluminum shoe. That's what I thought in the beginning. Looks like a racing plate. What is this horse currently doing at the moment? I believe it's a dressage horse. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely not balanced. If I look at the foot like this. I can see that, but I mean, the shoe could have shifted a little bit, but then again, still, it's still not very balanced towards the inside of this foot. The medial side looks a little bit wider. Um, so this horse would look pigeon toed, if I can say that. Mm. It's definitely. Can you say how you came to that conclusion? So again. How did you come to the conclusion that she's pigeon toed? What? Where? How do you see that? I can see she's taking a lot more weight on the on the outside of this foot, and that inside of the foot is slightly higher and wider. Uh, can I can I just point that out very quickly? Yes. Let me just. Uh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. My phone's not playing. Uh, she also says the horse is being used for polo. This is a polo pony from Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do this quickly. Can you see the picture now? Yes. Okay, right. Let's just ask them what am I doing? Right. Now you can see that uh, 
this area here is a bit wider. You can see that's wider. Correct. Okay. And if you look at if you look at this side of the foot, it's straighter, but it almost looks like the side of the shoe is worn more. Okay. Sorry. It's like she's taking more weight on that side. And this, if you look at this foot, it will probably be flared that way. Mm. Okay. So definitely this horse definitely turns in a bit like pigeon toe side away. Okay. And I bet they tried to straighten it out, but they didn't bring this side in enough. That's what I can see in this picture. I mean, if you take a line through, through the center of this foot. Uh, come on. Yeah. You take a line through the center of the foot, you can see this is more, this side here is more of a gentle arc, where this one is more of a flared out. I do see. So do you think the horse, um, pivots when she walks yes on she, this side yeah so like she's squishing a cigarette when she walks she'll, she'll land on this side here and twist that foot she'll land on the outside and twist her foot slightly okay I understand so it's almost like you walking on the outside of your foot and then, and yeah. then twisting your foot the same, same that this horse is doing it's definitely got a bit of a twist in there, but it's also because the inside of that foot is wider and uh, it's actually that she's taking a lot. And it could be that the inside foot might be slightly higher as well or, or tend to grow higher over a shoeing cycle and then just put the foot out of balance. Got it. Because this, this definitely looks to me like the foot is... Yeah, I'd, I'd say she's a little bit pigeon toed yeah. slightly turning in. Okay. So, so, yeah, I mean, look, if they, you know, once you've got the shoe off, then you can get a good um, look at the white line, what it does, and, and, and everything else. And I mean, with the shoe on, it hides a lot, so you can't see that much. But what I can see is that. The yields are slightly contracted. The yields looks quite low. And uh, for a dressage horse, I would definitely put a, a shoe on slightly longer in the back um, to, to just give a little bit more suspension control, a bit more um, uh, room to land at the back when she does her paces. And also the toe, I would bring it back a little bit just to give it a easier breakover. But some of them like a long toe. I don't know why people think that the horse throws a foot out further. And I don't know what nonsense. But then uh, they can put on a, a different shoe for that. Okay. You know, they can actually put on a, 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 a thicker plate, you know, a, more of a, 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 a something like a Kirkart or something like that, just to to get basically what's going to have, it's going to have a bit, a bit of a wider web shoe. So there's going to be a lot more for the horse to stand on. And also it's a bit more weighty. So when the horse flicks out, it will eventually extend a little bit further forward. So it would help in the, in the, the result. I mean, you can do the equilibrium shoe, which also is basically um, rounded off uh, in the toe and slip it, not slip it, but more, um, uh, 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 the breakovers is, 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 is further under the foot. So you're going to get a better, movement out of the horse, especially for dressage. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not a problem. I mean, I've, I've got a horse that's, that's in the wide bars at the back uh, with for the dressage, and she's doing very well, and she's not even a, a good mover because uh, she's actually an inventor, and uh, her best is basically a jumping and a, and a cross country, but she's getting good marks in dressage, but she's like, she moves like a cripple, <laughs> if you can call it that. Because she's got such an awkward movement, but with the shoes on, she's moving so nicely. <laughs> with her, with her, because just because she's got a lot more support at the back of the foot, so mm -hmm. she trusts her feet more, so she actually extends a bit more. 
So she does quite well in the eventing, the three phase eventing. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So yeah, if she wants to give me a call or send me a message or send me a couple of pictures when the shoes are off, we can have a look at it quickly and, you know, a farrier, we can chat. He can, you know, do whatever he needs to do. I mean, he's going to be shooing the horse, but I mean, I can at least give him some sort of idea what, what would help the horse perform a bit better, if that's the case that they're looking for, or correct the feet if the feet's in a state. I mean, look, uh, the feet's not, is this an X-ray source? Uh, I don't know. It's got that type of feet. Because <laughs> I know they use a lot of these, um, uh, uh, polar ponies are all, most of them are all X-ray sources. Because yeah, the guys say straight, they don't want any other horses for polo ponies because the racers has got the speed to get onto the ball quickly. So they all want uh, 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 X race horses, the little ponies, the little ones. They don't want these big horses. I know the Argentinians can play here a lot and they are rough on their horses. Jeez, those guys are rough. Mm. You think uh, <laughs> football is rough? <laughs> these acts are rough. <laughs> Not for me, but... Well, I'm hopeful that the, that the two of you will connect. Um, Lumi's saying she's thrilled. So thank you from both of us. No problem. So yeah, well, I'll wait for a message and uh, we can have a chat. Super cool. Okay. Um, um, also, is it possible just so, so we can spread the tact word um, to make your post about the periopal removal either on YouTube that we can share it so that people can see what we're talking about? Yeah, you can. I'm sure it shouldn't be a problem. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with it, really. But I know there's going to be a lot of people that has a problem with it. <laughs> oh, OK. Never mind. <laughs> well, not on, on our group. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i just saying um, <laughs> there's always the, the naysayers out there. So, you know, I was never wanting to preach to the mm. to the nice days I wanted I mean look there I don't mind it's not a problem at all for me I don't really have a problem with that but okay. I mean yeah it's uh, I can make it and put it on YouTube I don't I don't mind really it, it would just be helpful for us when we're talking with people and, and trying yeah you see the thing is just a lot of people will misunderstand it so there was a guy that was on tech um, and uh, he was on tech like for five minutes I think and then he mm. left, and he saw the video of the periopal removal, and the, and then he went like, "Oh no, no, no! We'll never touch the frog." And and then I already saw, and then then he left. Okay. <laughs> so, I know a lot of people is not going to like it because they don't understand it. You see, the problem is if they don't understand the anatomy of the foot and how to to manipulate the manipulate the foot to get to that uh, state, they are not interested in changing the old habits that they've got and they'll give you pressure from all sides that why it's not right and why it's not and I said listen I don't want to fight with you you do what you want to do I'll do what I want to do you know so I don't have a problem with it but I just uh, to me I don't want to have issues with people <laughs> they can have their own issues with themselves <laughs> I mean, I understand because I take my lumps sometimes when I speak up on something. So I get it. So yeah, it's not a fun fight. I don't have a problem, but I'm just thinking to me is we can discuss it here and we can say why we're doing it and what we're doing it to the members here, you know, and they'll understand when to do it and when not to do it. Now you put it on YouTube and everybody thinks, oh, well, it's either a, okay. a, a, a torture or they're going to do it with every horse and every time and it's not at the right time and then they have a problem and they say no but that doesn't work and you profess this i said no if you're not willing to, to, to learn the rest of the whole uh, trim or, or understand the whole anatomy and you want to pick parts of it then you're not going to get the correct uh, information or do the correct thing you yeah know? point made got it so yeah if she wants to chat uh little they don't know. I'm, I'm always up for it. It's not a problem. Okay. Thank you. Okie dokie. Is everybody says all people here? Yeah. Oh. What's the time now? Oh gosh, I need to get to bed. <laughs> okay, people, I don't know. Um, 
I would say uh, good night to everybody. Or is it morning in your side? I don't know. Is anybody still here? It's 6 p.m. for me. So good evening, oh. night. <laughs> Oh, it's evening for you. It's now just gone half past 11 in the, like, 11.46, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to go to bed. I hope you all have a good night and uh, enjoy the week further. Enjoy the weekend. Thanks, Risa. Good night. Ple pleasure. Keep well. Good night. So, I'm signing off. Bye-bye. See you guys next week. Cheers. Bye.